afternoon bingo safari with a bang. A breeding herd of buffalo, well, they did get up and run around for a little bit as it's quite windy and they seem to be a bit nervous, but they're starting to settle back down again, which is good news for us. My name is Taylor McCurdy and on camera with me today is Odie and we are here at Juma Private Game Reserve. Remember, this is a live and interactive safari, so we'd love to hear from you. So just remember to send through your, your questions and ask us anything you like. But for the Juma 12 Days of Christmas bingo fiasco, not fiasco, fiesta, that's the right one, <laughs> um, we already have something on the board, almost. So you just have to bear with me for a, uh, for a little bit. But uh, we do have a breeding herd of buffalo, as I said. However, what I am looking for is a buffalo that is grazing. Right now, they're not doing that, which is surprising because buffalo eat all day long but they're just taking the opportunity of the cool day that we've had this afternoon and just having a bit of a siesta underneath all of the trees. But they are watching me very, very closely, as you can see. That's quite artistic behind all the bush willow leaves. There's also lots and lots of oxpeckers, but we'll hopefully get a better view of them soon. See, some of them have actually, if you, um, Odie, in straight ahead of us, there's a cow with an oxpecker on her head. Yeah, one of those ones there. Um, though it's a little bit on the tricky side to sort of see. They're not eating yet, but some of them are chewing the cud. But I think as they start to wake up now, there were a few sort of there, almost, not quite. Isn't this crazy that we're sitting here going, someone eat, someone eats. No, it's going back down. Not ready to get up just yet. I thought that they would have started grazing because there were a few of them standing up and then we kind of switched off and we sat here for a little bit and then they all got up and stampeded. So I don't know if some were in a complete deep sleep and heard my voice and got a really big fright. And that's why they charged on off. But also, considering the size of an African buffalo, you'd think that they'd be a bit on, more brave. But, you know, I've watched Dacre pop out of bushes just as the sun is setting and making a herd of 500 buffalo stampede in the opposite direction. So they can be skittish. Uh, I kind of know why I mix all my words up. They can be skittish, of course. So we will wait. We will patiently wait. And if we can't get the buffalo grazing now, then we'll have to come back. I'm not quite sure how big this herd is. I did see some of their tracks this morning uh, crossing in from Simbambili side. But uh, we didn't really come, we, we did a quick loop around here. I didn't try and follow them, so it was quite possible that they were just in a, in a block somewhere. And because everything is so dense, we, we may have missed them. I was also so preoccupied with bugs. But there's a nice, as you can see, the herd extends quite a bit. There's lots and lots of branches moving around, as also I think some of the buffalo are feeling a bit on the itchy side. So we've got a tailored tick also uh, on, the, on the list today. So we're definitely going to going to check that out and see if we get a buffalo that's standing close enough to us and we zoom into another region we're bound to find a tick so I think I'll be spending a little bit of time here uh, with the with the buffalo should I try and get a different view I'm not sure if we're going to win maybe I'll go up the road a little bit and see if we can look back I'm just uncertain if this is the bulk of the herd that's kind of situated in there let's try Let's see, maybe there is one that has got its head down and is grazing. I'll just make sure I don't reverse into a tree. That won't go down very well. Okay, so there's a couple more here. Maybe we'll have a slightly better gap. No, maybe not. Mm. Go up a bit further. There's one. Hi, goodness gracious, old girl. Sure. So she's lived the full life. You'll have a look at her now. She's definitely seen better days. Her, she's missing a horn. That couldn't have been too pleasant. Well, I see the supporters already coming on in. Mandy is wishing me luck and saying that I've got this. <laughs> I'm going to try. I mean, never in my life have I ever want, like desperately wanted a buffalo to, to eat. And normally it's not a difficult thing for them to do. 
So yeah, so she's just tucked in over there by herself. I don't know where we're looking now. Some other buffalo behind the bushes, but difficult to see. Can we look at this old girl again? I just want to have a just want to have a look and see if she like if she's quite emaciated because I'm actually even gonna pick my binos up for this one. I just got my binoculars in case you don't know what binos are. She looks so tired. She's got her eyes closed, they look very heavy. She doesn't look in terrible condition. She's very muscular. She's actually quite a big girl. She looks like she needs to blow her nose though. But of course, you know, animals have a lot of mucus. If you're that tired, why don't you just sit down? She looks like she's about to fall over. She's so fast asleep. Right, seems as though we're not winning with a grazing buffalo just yet, so we'll put our patient's pants on. Let's go and see what the weather is like and whether or not we're going to be rained on this afternoon. Weather-wise, uh, it's looking ominous. It's looking like we might actually get a bit of rain, so I need to get cracking. And uh, what better way to start the afternoon with some lazy lions? So I'm not going to ponder too long on these. They are obviously very lazy, some of them. My name is Chris. That's the Ngati Pride. And with me on Camops is Johan. Right, lazy lions. One of my bingo animals. I'm out of red stickers, so I'm going to have to improvise. They are starting to move, but they are very lazy, some of them, sleeping, especially that young one there. And we always label lions as lazy, but it's actually good energy management. Why should they move when the conditions are not good to move? So they are characterized by very long, prolonged area, uh, periods of rest and then short, intense periods of activity. That's how they are made. And then we as people come and say, no, they're lazy, they're lazy, they're lazy. No, they are made to sleep a lot. Because the times that they do move, they expend a lot of energy. Hunting, marking territory, moving from one area to another. And then we label them as lazy. But, well, my board says lazy lions. Especially the one in the back there. That one looks very lazy. It's not keen to get up. It's a bit early, but they're opportunistic in the sense I met Sandy and I said, Sandy says this is why they call me the cat man. Yeah, well, again, a lot of luck involved here. Yeah? Look, I told you they're lazy. I need to get a point here. And we need to move because I'm worried about the rain. I want to win this today. Quickly find a oxpecker, buffalo, warthog, hornbill and I'm done. How about that? There's my line I'm targeting. Uh, this one not so easy but yeah oxpecker, buffalo. The wallowing warthog is going to be a tricky one especially on a day like today. Every hornbill. I can also try that one. The leopard there is going to be the kicker. But I'm glad we could start with lazy lions. Lazy and guardy lion pride. one's now moving this young lioness but we're just trying to find a a better spot to lie in I see the one big lioness the one with the droopy ear that big animal she's just found a nice little lawn like a beautiful little lawn to sleep on there I've probably been sleeping for most part of 
the midday in those trees along the drainage under those tamboti trees. They're probably just trying to set themselves up closer to the plain itself. And they can still not sleep, but still also perhaps keep a keen eye out on Impala Plain in case there is a something to hunt. And you can see, well, that one's just having a little loo break. My lazy lions have been confirmed. I thought that would be the case. All right, there we go. Number one on the board. I'm just glad the lions are back. We've had a couple of days consecutively where there were not any lions because they were not yet. You can see I had to improvise a little bit. <laughs> my stickers got wet. So unfortunately I cannot use my orange stickers anymore. So I'm just using some tape. But that will count, I'm sure. <laughs> That's what we do out here. If... Um, you have to improvise. It's, it's just what you do. I've got some silver tape as well. Maybe I should use silver. What do you think? Give it a bit of a shininess. Yeah. I'm going to cut some, some silver ones. How about that? I do have scissors, yeah. What a great start. Yes, a very good afternoon, everybody. Yes, I am standing here at a chiller pan. Of course, I've got my cam up, Igor, with me. And my name is Cedric Dold. And of course, we are on Rooster this afternoon. But first of all, it is bingo day. So we are definitely amped and ready for bingo this afternoon. But it is my last drive on, uh, at Juma for this year. And of course, I am definitely living up to my tradition. I'm still coming to Chelapan. And I am going to do a little bit of a dance for our bingo and our war cry for the day. But first things first, I think we need some war paint. I think so. All right. So war paints. Good thing in, inside you. A lot of clay. It's a good thing I can always put on the face. Oh. All right. So this is our bingo noon. It was quite nice. Thanks. Mine is just a whole <laughs> smudge. <laughs> and of course, after that, we'll have to definitely do a little bit of a, a war cry. So are you ready? Let's go. go. Wooga shaka, wooga shaka. Salamba. Wooga shaka, wooga shaka. Kuchava. Wooga shaka, wooga shaka. Sidulu. Wooga shaka, wooga shaka. Mulawate. Yeah. All right. As we are running to go look for the animals around here for the afternoon, I am hoping that we are going to find some amazing things for everybody. I'm hoping that it's going to be a fantastic drive. <laughs> well, <laughs> but what a good start! And I think, uh, I think uh, Igor and myself are amped for this afternoon. So, and I think I've just eaten some mud <laughs> into my mouth. So, let's get this thing going, and I think let's jump on. <laughs> but yes, I am going for it. I'm going for the win. As I said, it is my last drive on Juma for the year. So I'm not going down. How can I say at all? I'm going down with a fight. Gerald, definitely team Cedric and Igor for this afternoon, Gerald. And I think that is the team to go for. And well, we are a little bit behind. So I think what is going to be my best bet here for the afternoon? I think <laughs> I just saw my face on the screen. <laughs> It's terrible, <laughs> but it is good for your skin anyway. So, <laughs> mischievous monkey, shy steenbok, observant owl, wandering 
wandering wildebeest and a laughing hippo. So I think this is going to be the best one for today. <laughs> and let's get going. Yes. Well, as I said, it's a, you know, chili pan is always nice. It's always nice to wallow here. A lot of animals love it. Buffaloes, elephants, rhinos, warthogs, Cedric, Igor. We all love wallowing here at chili pan. All right. All right. Well, we're going to go look for our first animal. Let's head over to Taylor to see what she's got to show you. We're still with a buffalo, however, we've spotted something else in the sky using the winds. And you can see that this white back vulture doesn't even look like it is moving, which is perfect. <laughs> Makes it a bit easier, hey Odie, <laughs> to follow a bird in the sky. So that is definitely something that we have on our list this afternoon on our bingo board is a soaring vulture. And there is no denying that that's exactly what that bird is doing. I think there was also a hooded vulture, but I just saw it briefly. It looked much smaller in size uh, that was flying about, um, but I, I didn't see where it went. I was just keeping an eye, making making sure that they don't all of a sudden put their landing gear down and start hurdling towards uh, the ground. Then we'll definitely be interested. But it doesn't look like that's the case right now. Oh, feet have come down a bit, haven't they? Yeah, no, now they have. So it's quite interesting. Um, that this vulture is actually using the winds to its advantage. So it doesn't have to do sort of a, a circular uh, motion to go down to the ground. I'm just watching carefully. However, I think that that might be in Buffel's hook, which is just, you know, a bit too far for us. But we can head towards the northern boundary and drive Buffel's hook um, boundary road and have a look there. So I'll just wait for some confirmation. Uh, to see if I get this bird, but this time I didn't even have to talk my way around it. I actually got the the, the animal doing the thing, which um, which is sort of great. But the buffalo are still uh, around. They've really tucked themselves in between all these bush willows, and it's been a bit breezy today. It hasn't been particularly bad, and not you know crazy winds. And I was recently down in the eastern Cape of South Africa, and I had forgotten how windy it gets down there. And I mean, I, I remember that's one of the reasons why I left the Eastern Cape. Um, so this is really just a still day if you if you were in the Eastern Cape. So I'm not sure why the buffalo felt the need to go and tuck themselves uh, in there. Sitting out in the open would have been perfectly fine too. Maybe it was because it was a bit of a break in the clouds during the middle of the day. It wasn't super hot. It was a bit humid. But uh, these buffalo have definitely experienced hotter days. So who knows why they did what they did. I'll just keep guessing and talking on behalf of them. They're probably sitting here going, she has absolutely no idea what she's talking about. None of these people do. They're all wrong, which wouldn't surprise me. Um, <laughs> and I still haven't seen one buffalo put its head down to eat yet. Can you believe? They're all just chewing the cud. Some are still sleeping and not ready to move on. So I might not win yet, but I know uh, you got something. Some of them are scratching. I don't see any of them grabbing long pieces of grass just yet. Not yet. We'll probably just stick here for a couple of minutes and then what we'll do is maybe we'll do a loop around to Buffalo Sock Boundary, just check it out, investigate, um, and see if we can see any more evidence. Maybe I see some more vultures heading in that direction. Yeah, no. I don't think they're quite ready to eat yet. Not ready to wake up. That one's going to sit back down again too by the looks of it. Yeah, are you going down? No, it's just still itchy. Still itchy. I'm sure one of you would have said that I got the sawing vulture, surely. Ah, finally. Finally, we have got confirmation. I've lost the stickers. Oh, no, I put, I put them in a safe place. Now, I don't have many to choose from. Uh, I've only just got the one sawing vulture, so I don't really have a choice as to where I'm going to put it. Boom. Look, I've got stickers today. Although I really liked my green squares yesterday. I thought it was creative. I liked it. It was different. Well, I like the, the contrasting colors here. We'll put those back in the bag so I don't lose all of them. Okay, Buffalo, I think, you know what, Odie, I think what we're actually going to do is let's move off from here because we're not going to get what we want and they are hidden so 
Well, we'll just be patient. We will go and do something else then, that's fine. I'm just going to do a little bit of maneuvering and we're going to reverse. So I don't feel like turning around in the bushes, so I'm just going to utilize this road. Meow. I really like reversing. I've become quite fond of it. I think everybody's so terrified of reversing when you first start driving. And I, th I suppose most people for well, their entire lives. But uh, as a safari guide, it is very important to be able to reverse, if not more important than going forward, because going forward is relatively easy. Right, we're going to head around to the northern boundary, off we go down to the southeast coast of South Africa, to Amakala, to say hello to Andrew. Thanks, Taylor, and good luck with your bumbling there. And good afternoon to everybody who has joined us for bingo this afternoon out here at Amakala Game Reserve. Hope you're all doing very well today and excited. I know myself and BK are pretty excited because we can actually contribute uh, to a full experience of bingo this afternoon, which we have been waiting for. We have had some rains recently, which blocked us from that opportunity. My name is Andrew. I do have Mr. BK behind me, behind the camera. And we have started off with some easygoing Eland, which is on our list, thankfully. So let's just wait for some confirmation on that. And we'll mark it down. Beautiful, hey? Eh? It's cooling down a lot now compared to what it was this morning. And a beautiful individual. Nice big bull with a few hitchhikers. Some red bull ox peckers. Isn't that cool? Such a big oak, this. Yeah, I would love to know what his weight is, but I would give it probably around 800 kilos, 750 kilograms. Can you imagine? Look at them just walking all over his body, trying to get to those parts that are exposed under the armpits. That's the most common place, and uh, between the, the genitals, that's where most of the ticks are. Well, we're going to send you over to Chris in the meanwhile and see if he's had any luck on his side. Right, this is not on my actual list. Wow, look at that beautiful visual of this cuckoo. I'm on the way to Leopard Dam before it starts raining. Uh, there's definitely some stuff inbound. Right, so this is either a Jacobin cuckoo or a Levelant cuckoo. We'll wait until it turns around. I'm gonna go for Levelant. It's looking at the striping that I can see on its throat. Whereas the Jacobin will have be total white throat and chest. You also get a melanistic form of the Jacobin, which is totally black. And they only have those white spots on the wings. Please don't speak to me. <laughs> Voices you might hear. I'll go for a well, It used to be called a striped cuckoo. Later, the name was changed to Levellant's Cuckoo. Yeah, that's a Levellant's Cuckoo. Both of them are Palearctic migrants. What a lovely visual of the Cuckoo there. All right. And he had food in his mouth. Or her. But it's not going to take food for the female on the nest. Why not? Remember Cuckoos as a family in general are brute parasites so they will lay their eggs in other birds nests okay ah uh, we are starting to get some drops but it's fine for now not very very fine drops that was a very nice visual of that cuckoo don't you think so in my language we call them new year's fools new year birds so the Levelance is called a gestrepte nieuwejaarsvul, like a striped New Year's bird. And 
the Jacobin cuckoo is a bond nieuwjaarsvogel, which is a pied New, New Year's bird. And I think the New Year's birds, probably the association with them, probably in the western bushveld where I'm from, where they arrive a little bit later, or in some parts. Here they arrive relatively early, but some, some populations only arrive relatively late in some of the western drier parts of the, of the country, sometimes. And therefore, it coincides usually with New Year's. I, I'm just trying to figure out why it would be called a New Year's bird, you know. But that association of them coming in summer, you know, that's probably where it's from. We've moved on from those buffalo, of course, and now we have found some birds. And the one that we're looking at, at the moment, it's a bit difficult to see because obviously the light is not so great, but it's a lilac breasted roller and it's just gone straight into the grass, obviously, to find an insect. Maybe it saw, saw something. And luckily for us, the rollers are going to fly back up to the tree as they normally do. They are creatures of habit. They are very radiant in color. And I'm sure you all agree with me, especially the lilac breasted rollers. Um, they are not migrants or anything, so they don't need to worry about their washed out feathers. I've seen a couple of European rollers that have arrived back and uh, they are not looking their best. So let me know if you think that that is indeed a radiant roller. Uh, we also have a silly starling on the list. Now, at first inspection, it looks like all of those birds other than the roller could be starling, but in fact, most of them are red-billed buffalo weavers. There was, I could, I could hear it, a uh, greater blue-eared starling uh, calling, and I don't know if, it's an, if it is an adult. Yes, dead center. So it, you can't really see it because there's a branch going through there, but you might see a little bit of the iridescence. But I didn't notice a very colorful eye, So, but I could definitely hear a greater blue eared starling. So I'm not sure if it's a, if it's a youngster, a juvenile uh, that, is, that is sitting there. It's 
little bit on the tricky side to sort of identify, but I am almost certain that we will find some other options for stylings this afternoon. Very nice though. Everything's holding on for dear life. But luckily for all those birds, they are insect eaters, so there is no shortage of food at the moment. Wonderful. Uh, it seems as though we, you know what I'm going to do, we're going to just, I need to move off the road very quickly because we've actually got some vehicles uh, coming ahead of us. I'm going to call them forward and then I'm just going to pull the car off the road and then we'll do the, we'll do the, uh, the ceremony. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe we'll get another look. Maybe there's some more starlings that are going to, that are going to arrive. Okay. Are you ready? What did, what did we say we're doing, Odie? We got the, the... Yowza. We got the roller. Where are you? I've lost it. Complete. There we are. It's hidden behind the steering wheel. There we go. Radiant roller. Done. Okay, we haven't really got. Oh, shame. These people. I've I, I pulled off the road for them so that they can come past, but I don't know if they are very nervous. Oh, look at the flock of. They're the starlings. Look at those silly starlings. What are they even doing? So our stylings don't perform murmurations of any kind. Yeah, those are all, and it sounded like they were great beard stylings, all in that quarry tree. Um, but that was uh, quite a big flock of, of stylings, and it almost, if you squinted, looked like it could have been a, a um, um, murmuration. But the European stylings are notorious for, of course, doing that. We, re we don't really see too many birds make or forming murmurations here, mainly just the red-billed quilias, but that's, uh, uh, you know, not not quite on in the Sabi Sand. I haven't seen it, but up in other parts of South Africa, I definitely have. Now, I know some of you have said that the gra I have a grazing buffalo. I'm not going to take it, though. I have to uh, very politely decline because none of those buffalo were grazing, and I'm happy to go back to them a little bit later. Okay, let's, let's actually, Odie, where you are... Can we can we look at the ones that are in front of us? I'm so sorry. This uh, I think it's a false marula that the, what they're sitting on. And right on the top right hand side, there's one bird by itself. I do think that this is a silly styling, and I'm obviously going to tell you why. Because why on earth would you be associating with red-billed buffalo weavers when there's a whole bunch of other starlings together? Do you have anything to say for yourself? I think you're a silly starling. I mean, right now it's not like they, you know, feeding together or anything. This is obviously just sitting in tree for safety of safety of uh, safety in numbers. I think I need to go back to school and learn how to English because it's um, it's a struggle. Um, but yeah, but I shall I shall wait for your for your confirmation there. It'd be nice to actually have a starling bathing. I enjoy watching birds birds when they have a bath. It's always quite comical. Just giving itself a bit of a clean. It's pretty impressive balancing act there. I don't know if I'd be able to, if I had wings. I mean, I don't think I could stand on a branch and move around as much as that bird is without toppling over. It has taken on a wide stance though. Now, Daniel, who is just 10 years old, thank you for watching, and I'm so happy you asked me this question. So Daniel wants to know where are a bird's ears located. So Daniel, birds don't have external ears like we do. Their, their ears are internal, and you don't really see them because they've got feathers sort of covering them. But if you get close enough, you can look just behind the eye, and you'll almost see like a half moon sort of shape, and that's basically where the ear canal sort of starts. So it's not something that you see very often. But Daniel, I'm wondering if you can do something for me. I have a a quest for you this afternoon, so I hope you are still watching. I wonder if you could draw me a picture of a bird with ears though. They can be any kinds of ears you want. They can be human ears, they can be ears from a bunny, maybe giraffe ears or lion ears, but I think that that could be quite funny. And if there are any other children that are watching today, maybe you can send us through um, those pictures. I would I would definitely like to see them. And I think birds, or I think people would like birds a lot more if they did have external ears. Can you imagine how hilarious that would be? I wouldn't be able to take them very seriously. Then starlings would absolutely be silly. That's for sure. 
but they're all basically moving away now, so we're probably going to do the same. I was hoping we'd get an impala or maybe a... <gasps> there's, there's a warthog. There's a warthog, and I know that I'm get, getting excited, and it's ridiculous. Okay, hang on. We have to move because I... Oh, almost, I'm just breaking the car. <laughs> I'm going to reserve my comments. Okay, hang on. There was a huge warthog that just walked there. Maybe it's going to go and wallow because I do have a wallowing warthog. Let's see. Now, Odie, are you ready? I'm going to... You know what warthogs are like. They disappear. Okay, here it is. It's going to pop out. Yes. You piggy, I got you. Hello, piggy. A little bit to the right. Is it? Oh, you, oh, you were on the far left, sorry. There it goes. Hi, Piggy. Now, unfortunately, that warthog is most certainly not wallowing. It is walking. It does, it has been wallowing, though. It's actually wet. It is covered in, uh, it's obviously been in more of a pool of water rather than just thick mud. But, of course, they have the opportunity to do that because of all the rain that we've had. So I don't know if that's count. That, that warthog had wallowed recently because it is still very very wet i actually just picked up my binoculars and had a closer look um sometimes it's a bit difficult to see the detail on uh, on the monitors i'm gonna stay like this for now and we'll see if it uh, if it sort of carries on um and we are able to to follow it i mean i've never trailed a warthog in my life however there's a first thing for everything for this game i just might no, it's of course hiding behind the bushes. Warthog, come out. Oh, there we go. So I just needed to ask it. And off it goes. So, it, yeah, it's a, it's a, a warthog boar. He doesn't look like he's particularly old or particularly big. Maybe just a couple of years old. I've definitely seen much larger individuals. Um, but very much separated and just doing his own thing. I don't think there's any wallows in that direction, though. Okie dokie. Well, we'll wait to see if uh, the warthog will wallow. I don't know if it did because it has just been in a wallow, but off we go across uh, to Cedric uh, to see if he's got any stickers to put on his bingo board. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I, just had a, I just had a Cape Glossy styling here right on top. And of course, wait, there's another one. Oh, there's another one. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> And uh, this one I uh, can see has just come down, so yeah, the one that we had in frame just f as we went uh, uh, into frame that just flew away. But yeah, a nice old Cape Glossy Starlings Yeah, in one of the dead trees just south of uh, Biffleswick Dam at the moment, just acting a little bit silly this side, as you can see, just jumping around or scratching his head. And the other one was just jumping around just now from branch to branch. So I'm just taking, but they are beautiful. And I'm wondering if they're not nesting in this dead tree because many times you'll find that the glossy starlings, um, they do nest in these hollowed out trees. So maybe that might be a pair of them. That's just kind of coming back and forth here towards this tree. Oh, almost some, another, another starling almost flew into him. But they are quite silly, these ones. I absolutely love them and adore them. So I have got silly starlings on my bingo board. And I'm just waiting to see, oh, he's, like he's busy having a bit of a dance there. He's acting a little bit silly, having a bit of a dance off on that branch. And you can see a little bit windy up there as well. And quite silly to be so high up in a tree with this uh, breeze that's coming through. Let's see what he's going to But yes, if you guys got any confirmation on this uh, silly styling, let me know. No, this is a live and interactive show. So if you've got any comments and questions, suggestions, some stories, or maybe a, one of the naturalists that you like to see winning this bingo game, let us know. Oh, and he's just gone, my, my. So yeah, he's just, he just took off there now. I think there was another one to the left. Is it gone as well? No, they're all gone. So yes. Oh, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, yes, the silly starling has been confirmed. So, I've got the silly starling just, yeah, that's just perfect, perfect, perfect. And I think maybe 
an elevated Egyptian geese, a wallowing warthog. I know that uh, Tyler almost had a warthog that was wallowing, a cackling hyena and a wandering wildebeest. So definitely I'm going to take a look around for that. But on top of that now, we've also just spotted a very old male buffalo that's just south of Buffelzook Dam. So this must be definitely one of uh, the older males, of this old male that's been hanging around the dam quite a bit. I don't know if you've been seeing recently, there has been that injured male. You can see on the left-hand side, he has got a bit of a wound as well on his uh, flank there. So I'm sure it must be this uh, same male that's been hanging around this side. But yeah, while we're going to continue just looking around here, let's head over to Amakala with Andrew. If he's got something to mark down on his board. Yes, and we indeed do have uh, something to mark down. So uh, one of the animals on our list which we already got was the easy-going elant. And thanks everybody for that confirmation. And then uh, we have hartebeest here. And on the board it says hartebeest feeding. And uh, it definitely looks like they are feeding there. We'll wait for confirmation. If we get the confirmation, we'll be two up. How cool is that? I hope we're ahead of Cedric, that's for sure. They've actually been here for most of the day uh, and we knew that they were here so we had a bit of a, a hidden advantage and we came through here and they were still here which is quite nice. Back to feeding, yay! Nice little sunny spot this for them. They've been lying down and just sitting and relaxing, enjoying the sun. And now they've just gotten up and started to move around and feed. This is the red heart of East Antelope, by the way. Beautiful looking animals. Very strong, formidable, if I may say. Incredibly powerful animals. Here we go, a little bit of the, the shadows there. It's almost... Um, emphasizes their beautiful white bottoms and you see that with their black tail at the end good following mechanism but also just nice to look at as well and they seem quite hungry now just picking up as much grass as they can especially that one on the left side And they've just gone through their calving season. And some of the calves are very young at the moment. So we can see the two individuals, but there are more. Just they've gone behind one of these thickets over here. Ah, great. So we do have confirmation. Let me show you what my board looks like. Just so you can all see it. So that's the board. We are sort of aiming for this top row over here. I think the hardest one for us is probably going to be either the, the millipede walking or the warthog wallowing. But uh, definitely doable. This is going to be our best bet. So I will mark it. We've got two so far. <laughs> I wonder how many Cedric's got. He cannot win today. If he wins today, I, I promise I will, I will be upset. So where are we? Hard to be feeding. There we go. Two in a row. That's awesome. We'll put this behind here. So we are going to have a vehicle that's going to bypass us here. And they can carry on with their guests. Okay, I believe Cedric's got one point. <laughs> Cedric, you're going to have to catch up. We are in the lead above you, which is where we want it to be. But it's not over until it's over, they say. So as I mentioned, it's cooling down quite a bit now. So you can imagine tonight is going to be fairly cool. So most of these animals would be pretty happy just to warm up now while that sun is a bit mild get the body temperature nice and and high and then hopefully when tonight comes and it cools down that they will be plenty warm 
otherwise they'll just battle through the night if they don't have some sort of strategy to warm up before the, the night approaches. Sorry, I apologize about that. There was another vehicle just passed us there. And one of the most impressive things you'll ever see with red hartebeest is when they run. They can run fast. And according to the books, you know, up to 60 kilometers an hour, around about there, which is fairly fast. Alright, I'm on Biffleswick cut line now. Just to, to take a look at uh, Biffleswick Dam for any, maybe like I've got Egyptian, uh, elevated Egyptian goose. Uh, there's not even a lapwing there, there's not even an Egyptian goose at the Biffleswick Dam. So, <laughs> yeah, clearly that uh, the dam is very, very quiet. So I'm heading on Biffleswick cut line. Just going to go further east along here to see if I can maybe find some dashing impalas around on the fire break, which would be fantastic. But yes, I have taken my wall paint off for now. It felt like my uh, once it <laughs> once the mud was drying, it felt like it was pulling my face all to one little spot there. So yeah, it feels nice and smooth now. You're smooth, though. Eh? Yeah, very smooth. It's amazing what that mud does. Yeah, it feels amazing. Absolutely amazing. That's why I think a lot of people go for that. Uh, that mud, uh, what's called it? Mud facials and all that I can understand ours is a little bit more natural when it comes to a little bit of this and a little bit of that all mixed up I think uh, <laughs> that's why we had to remove it I don't want to keep it on for too long as I have got some in my mouth as well so I had a little bit of a crunching time All right, I'm just taking a look. I'm going to find an impala on this fire break. Where, where are my animals for my board? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? This is where we have to really dig deep and try and find and really look carefully. Oh, Thomas, there's so many animals that's got social structures. Um, so many. I mean, I enjoy the elephant social structure. I love the lion social structure. I love the wild dog social structure. There's so many different animals that's got social structures, uh, Thomas. And uh, and I love it. I love animals as social structure. But I also love animals that's more kind of as a solitary, independent uh, an animal. So like your leopard, for instance. I think it's fantastic that how they work alone and all that. But. Uh, if I actually look at it, but think of them, maybe elephants. Elephants got a fantastic social structure. I mean, it's amazing how they respect the matriarch. It's amazing how they actually communicate with each other, how they help each other. So I think maybe elephants is definitely right up there. Right up there. All right, I don't see any. Hmm. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, I did come down here this morning. Apparently, one of the guides told me about the wild dogs inside Buffalzook as well. So, unfortunately, I don't have any wild dogs on my on my board. But it'll be nice to bump into bump into them and, and see them. So, I'll just keep my eyes peeled. Yeah. Okay, well, sorry, what was the question again there? Sorry, Chulu, I, I could not copy a thing that you asked there. Please go over that again. <laughs> Langa lava, no, Langa lava, okay. Langa lava, yes, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, I know it is nice just to use uh, a little bit of... Uh, the mud for the skin and take care of the skin definitely i believe in uh, as i always do natural stuff natural uh, remedies yeah and it always for some reason it always works 
always works. Okay, so I've just turned Chirakat line. I'm on our eastern boundary of uh, Juma now. And I think I'm going to go and just take a look. I'm sure we can find impalas here, some dashing impalas down this road somewhere. Because if I don't find if there's no impalas on the on on uh, Chila Cut Line, then I, I don't know. Then maybe maybe uh, Igor and my uh, war dance for bingo was uh, maybe another war dance for something else. You never know. But we shall see. All right, well, we're gonna, I'm just trying to search for any impalas around here. While we do that, let's head over to Taylor to see if she is coming right on her board. Well, we followed the Warthog. Sorry, we're just driving on the world's worst road. Um, and I followed it for a little bit, but unfortunately there were no wallows nearby. So I gave up and uh, we moved on. We're probably going to head towards the gate now and then just do a loop and then head on to Bufflesook Boundary and uh, just check around. I mean, what obviously is happening on some of these mitre drains that, you know, we as people, the conservation teams have um, excavated, uh, they've filled up quite nicely with the rain that we had. So this would be a perfect little wallow. But I don't think that warthog was coming in this direction. It was kind of heading a little bit more uh, south and to the east. So but a good place to kind of look out for other potentials. It looks like actually something was wallowing just up ahead. Do you see in that corner? Just, I'll just stop down over there. Uh, that side, yeah. Looks like there's quite a bit of disturbance. It even looks like there's a little bit of foam on the water just if you drop down just a smidgen. Um, there we go. And, and that's most likely sort of the oil secretions that come off of animals' bodies that's sort of sitting there. So maybe a warthog was in there at one point today or a buffalo trampled on through it. But sadly, nothing that we need. Right, I believe that we've got the silly starling. So I'm going to mark that. That gives us another way. Were there more, was there more than one silly starling? No, it's only this one. There we go. And uh, we'll continue our search. Three down. We will keep going. What else do we need? A resting rhino, tardy tortoise. Maybe we'll get a tortoise. Oof, it's tricky. We've had a few over the last couple of days, but they, we've just had like some young ones that are quite quick and then zip off into the long grass and then it's impossible to find them again. Uh, oh, an elevated Egyptian goose. They're always on their high horse, so it's not quite hard to, to get that one. Um, <laughs> otherwise, we hopefully find Egyptian goose sitting on something. Uh, what else? A hungry hornbill. That's always quite, quite an easy one. They never seem to stop eating. Fidgety frog. We'll have to wait for a bit later. Maybe we'll have as much amphibian luck as we had last night. And yeah, there's a couple of things that we can definitely try and get this afternoon. Sorry, this road's a little bit on the bumpy side and I haven't quite got the opportunity to turn off the road just yet. But as soon as one turn comes available, I will be jumping on it. It's not always my favorite to drive the boundary roads, but it's important. Just do a little check every now and then. Just trying to find the part of the road that's the least bumpy. This is not particularly great, but we're going to turn off shortly. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to get off this road. And while we bump around here on all of the rules and corrugations, Cedric is also just driving around, I think, hoping that a chameleon or something might cross his path. Thank you, Taylor. <clears throat> yeah, I'm definitely trying my best to even find a, a bird here yeah, at the moment. It just seems maybe this uh, 
overcast weather and this windy uh, afternoon might be playing a little bit of a part here but you never know I'm still gonna do definitely a little, little search around and see if we are luckier I might just go down towards central take a look where maybe Marips came into this area well, I don't have I don't have a leopard on my board but I'm sure I want to end off with a, a leopard on my last uh, drive for the uh, year at Juma, so uh, I won't mind that at all. Alright, so I'm going to go on central, let's go, oh, oh I'm just thinking about something now. No, I'm going to go on Cheetah Cut Line, I'm going to continue Cheetah Cut Line, I'm still going to do a bit of a search on this side. I think Cheetah Cut Line might still be the best option, yeah. Even for the, even for Tlalamba, after Igor shouted Tlalamba's name so so loudly and hard and with a lot of passion, I think that might be a, fantastic to see if we can pick up on uh, that female. It's amazing how this weather, but well, the weather's been nice today. It's been very ni nice and fresh, nice and cool. It hasn't been that hot at all throughout the day and um, it seems like they said there's no rain but I mean if you've got a breeze like this here in the low felt once you've got a breeze coming through just yeah, rain is very very minimal then Can we stop there please? Because now we have got some leopards making love. Now this is not like when a baby human bites your finger. Let's push play on this episode of The Wild Show. Now I know it doesn't look like we're looking at much right now. <laughs> you might hear the, zzz, the sort of droning sound. Um, there are, that's so cool, many, many different dung beetle species. And we do have daring dung beetles uh, on, the, on the board this afternoon. Um, there was a herd of uh, impala and they have defecated here, but the dung beetles have completely dismantled all of the pellets and have turned them into little brood balls. I'm not sure which one you can see. Odie, can you see this one here? It's coming. It's trying its hardest. Come on, you can do it. 
Others are really funny. They fly and then they just sort of fall. I wonder if they're inside a dung beetle, if there is something driving them, like a little pilot, sort of just sitting around there, desperately trying to fly them. Because I, I don't know if they're piloting themselves. I'm not 100% certain. It's a bit difficult to show you. There's another one that's fine. They're right here. I'm, I'm not going to pick a dung beetle up and to come and um, show it to you. Let me see if I can move some of the vegetation a little bit. Can you see this one? There we go. So not really making uh, but too much of a big ball. You know, when you're starting to use something like uh, impala dung, there really isn't much to go from, especially if there's, you know, 20 of you all scrambling around. Now, unfortunately, you're not able to see all the different species that are here, but there are little green emerald dung beetles. There are um, plum-colored dung beetles. They are even my favorite, the spider dung beetles. They're tiny with these exceptionally long legs, uh, which is quite epic. So I think that this should count, so I'll wait for confirmation if we can get daring dung beetle. I think it's quite daring. There's always a, somebody that might want to, ch that will challenge you. Um, and actually we've got a dung beetle that's in hot pursuit of this individual that has already rolled the ball. Are you going to steal it? It's navigating all of the vegetation. Come on, you can do it. That's not a difficult thing to get over. And now we're going to have a disagreement. Are you going to do a behavior that we love watching. No, you've gone right past him. Never mind. That's disappointing. You've literally missed an opportunity. This dung beetle is really not doing a good job at keeping its ball together. Oh well. Okay. That one was not a daring dung beetle. It's so funny trying to watch it. Oh, now he's gone to steal another one. It's a pity that you aren't able to see the bulk of them, but just the vegetation is a little bit on the tall side. Let me just check around, make sure. There's nothing stalking up on me or walking down the road. Luckily, I've got the Impala alarms. Oh, what about these ones? Um, Odie, there's a couple of tiny little dung beetles. Do you see this one? Well, my little, is it a little green one? Yeah. In front of my finger. Hi. Those are the tiny little emerald dung beetles. The Impala is snorting. I do suspect it is at me, though. So it's one of the smaller beetles. Meow. Off it goes. Sure, there's so much going on over here. I wish it was on the road, though, so that it was easier for all of you to see. I love watching those dung beetles. Gosh, they're all flying around me. I'm going to get hit. I'm going to get hit, but I'm going to come back to the vehicle now. Okay. Sorry, Impala. I know. I know, I know. Okay, let's carry on. Right, we have got a confirmation for daring dung beetles, so I'm going to stick it on the, where is, I think I've got two, do I have two daring dung beetles? There's one. No, just this one. Okay. Boom. Let's go. Let's try to get dashing impala, because uh, the rams are up here. We'll have a quick look at them. I think there might be some females now too. Maybe they've joined up with a, a breeding herd. I don't want to scare you all. I would like you to dash. There we go. There are a few impala. Are you going to run away? Yes? Yeah, we, you know, I think we used the, well, yesterday we did literally have dashing impala. Okay, we'll wait our turn. Anyway, Cedric is off the car just like I was. I wonder what he's found down on the ground. Yes, thanks, Taylor. As you can see, we've got a giant land snail here on Mamba Road. And it looks like it's just resting a little bit here on the road. Um, I'm trying to see. I thought it was going to maybe move a little bit further into the grass because it's nice and cool. I thought it will be taking this opportunity. But clearly this uh, snail is not uh, moving too much around. <laughs> um, but yeah, I see a little cover, quite a few ants around here as well. So I think maybe the snail needs to move a little bit more because I think these snail, oh, the ants, um, it's almost like the little red ants. It's uh, trying to take the opportunity to actually maybe uh, feed on the snail, but you can see, yeah, no, I think he's moved a little bit here during the daytime. Got a bit of a snail trail this side at the back, back end here as well. Um, but yeah, no, 
It is quite nice just to get one of these things. And it's amazing this time of the year, our summertime, once it starts raining, it's a lot of water around. These snails are really quite active and it is absolutely beautiful. I saw a huge one there close to my room, uh, not yesterday, the day before, and it was, it was so, so big. So yeah, very nice just to see uh, these giant lane snails. So that's a sleeping snail. So I'm just uh, gonna take a look. Well, we've got a sleepy snail on my board. I am, I think, uh, a little bit behind with, uh, with my board at the moment, um, but I have got a sleeping snail here. So if anyone's got a good old confirmation for me, please let me know. So if I can get a sleeping snail, I can get a yelling lapwing down towards Twin Dams where I'm heading to. Kingfisher at the Twin Dams giraffe. I think maybe this could be uh, definitely the line to look at. So I'm hoping that we can put that one on screen. So I am full of mud still around and all that. My feet is full of mud as well. So it's just I've been wallowing a little bit there at Chilipan with Igor. So. Uh, doing a little bit of mud bathing. Sorry, Chulu. Did you Chulu say something? No, 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 no. All right, I'm going to try and leave this little snail here. Said bear. Eagle's uh, shorts could be scaring the animals. Well, <laughs> said bear. Hmm. <laughs> well, I wonder. Um, no, I think those those shorts are quite camo. I think they really fit in here with the, we call it schlatin with the bush. So I think it's definitely, uh, it, it fits uh, the surrounding with all this beautiful green leaves coming through. And definitely. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks for the confirmation on my sleepy snail. <laughs> there we go. Let's put that one just there. Fantastic. Thank you. Yelling lapwings, definitely will get to twin dams. Kingfisher, I'm hoping. Goofy giraffes, you know. I think that might be the might be the good one. All right. So let's uh, let's head over that side so long, slowly but surely. I am a little bit behind yet. It's the first time I feel like I'm. I'm uh, losing completely here, but uh, it's anyway, it's all good fun, loving it, always love it, love the day, day of bingo. So, yeah, while we're going to continue, let's head over to Amakala with Andrews to see what he's got. Alright, I'm going on Mamba Road. <clears throat> I'm going to slow it down. I think I think Mamba will be a nice one, but it is quite a bit of a breeze through here. I think we're just gonna just take a look around here slowly. See if we can maybe maybe get a, a giraffe. I saw some giraffe tracks earlier as well. And giraffe tracks I saw was up there on uh, Niala South, coming south. So maybe it is a good direction, maybe it's the right choice of uh, uh, all right, you know, all right choice here. I'm going down this side towards Twin Dams. Got a feeling. Well, while we're going to head down this side, let's head over to Taylor to see what she's got. Now I don't know if you can see him very well because. There is one elephant, and you're probably going, Tell why on earth are you miles away from him? That's ridiculous. But he is in must. It is a fairly young elephant bull, not a, a particularly big individual. Um, there he has deposited some dung, as you can see, which is going to be great because all the dung beetles are going to uh, fly in that direction. And I, I wish we did have smell vision so you could just every now and then get the sense that uh, we are breathing in it's actually not particularly too pungent but um he he definitely is a mess i'm gonna go forward um just a little bit he isn't not too bothered with us at all but i don't want to take any chances and even though we trump elephant on on our board i don't think that i want an elephant to do uh, to me so we will just make sure that we do give him a little bit of space yeah, gosh, she's dribbled so much. I want to see if I can maybe show you the dribble. Where's a nice one? I won't get out, of course. 
I'm just trying to find a nice patch where it's really obvious. Mm, maybe I won't be able to show you. There's too many patterns on the ground here. Hey, dung beetles, I'm going to go over you. Oh, there he is. I'll just go over the top of all of that. There he is. Well, no, again, we're just going to keep our um, distance a little bit from him and just keep an eye on him. Now that we can have a, a much closer look at this individual. Yeah, like I said, I don't think he's a particularly old fellow. Like, I don't think he's in his 50s or anything like that. I think he's a, an elephant bull, um, still relatively in his prime from what I can see. He doesn't look too big. Looks like he could maybe grow into his body a little bit. He's quite tall, but uh, I don't think he's filled out quite a bit. So perhaps he's in his going, late 20s going into his 30s, somewhere around there. But of course, it's really difficult to age elephants because of genetics that determines uh, tusk size quite a bit. So you can't really go on that. And then obviously each elephant is different. Not all elephants look exactly the same. Some have are really tall, long, gangly legs, which we normally see with teenage elephants, and they never fill out. You know, others might be much shorter and but really stocky, and uh, that's why it's always quite tough. Okay, now he's busting through the bushes. We'll try and follow him and see if we can get a be better view, but we're going to have to a maneuver. And you can always come back and watch the the dung beetles at some point. But I'm happy to finally see an elephant. We'll have an elephant live at least. We won't, like I said, we'll just watch him. We don't want to upset him. We want to let him go about his day. We're probably going to get another glimpse of him now. We just got to pass this termite mound and then we're going to get another view of the elephant if he doesn't change his course of direction which I think he might do he's kind of quite happy just moving through all the quarry trees but it does open up um, a little bit ahead and then we'll get a view from him so we'll just be patient until he does get to that point like I said the last thing we want to do is to agitate him because he's going to be a little bit on the annoyed side ever. Not all elephant bulls are, you know, weenie at, at Pridens quite often when he's in full must. And he's actually quite a relaxed fellow. I think he just knows how enormous he is and that no one is really going to try and cause trouble with him. I often find with a lot of the, the younger bulls that are coming into must for the first time, you know, finally we have, we have a chance to mate with the females, you know. Um, yeah. I don't know if they're lacking in something, but they definitely do take it out on us sometimes. But he's very peaceful. He hasn't. He had. A, he sort of side-eyed us once, and then I just switched the car off, and he carried on, and now he's quite happy again. I don't know if he's munching on the the guari bushes. But during the must period, though, with elephants, they don't really eat very much. Oh, he's going to come out again. We'll just watch him. It's quite impressive that he can disappear like that. Hello, boy. So you can kind of see what I mean now. He's not the biggest elephant I've seen. Um, even actually, his head actually looks a little bit small for his body, don't you think? Like he hasn't quite grown into that yet. But an impressive fella, nonetheless. Ah, eating grass, of course. Why would you not eat grass when that's your favorite thing? I think if elephants only had the opportunity to eat grass, they'd be quite happy with that. I don't think you can hear him tearing up the grass. We might be a little bit too far away. But if you look at the back of his ear, do you see that there is a tick? Do you see that white thing? Aha, uh -huh, we'll keep an eye on that for in a minute.
Now I really have lazy lines, even though I already have it on my bingo board. And uh, you can look at that weather approaching. It's been playing cat and mouse with us. Uh, still a couple of drops around, but we thought we'll stick around HQ in case we need to run for cover. All around us, it's blue, 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 blue stuff. There's a big storm to the north, which we can't see from here approaching. And we can actually see some drops falling. It's quite a pretty sight though, with the lions, the green and the blue in the background. Uh, it's dropping again. Um, we're okay for this segment, I'm sure. But it is getting very unstable in terms of weather. And I think we are in for a big one. I hope. So we need some good rain. Really good rain. Just look at this beautiful light. And I do not have my camera with me. What a pity. I actually sold my camera. I want to upgrade. I'm just waiting for good, good deals. So I've got all the lenses, but no camera at the moment. <laughs> and this is when you get your best shots. So the day that you do not have your camera with you. Oh, that light is just so lovely. Lower the way they all lie together. Hi there, Rose Candy. She Rose Candy wants to know how do breakaway prides form? Um, well, there's a couple of reasons. Usually, it's when a pride reaches a certain capacity. Meaning, remember that the young lionesses stay with their natal pride; the males disperse. But eventually there's too many lionesses in the pride and what will happen is some of the lionesses will take some of the younger ones and they'll form a subgroup and start a new sub pride eventually a full-fledged pride sometimes it's due to weather and that will be a temporary thing sometimes what we see now with the Ngati pride is that they don't really break away i'm not referring to the breakaways i'm talking about the Ngatis themselves they broke up into two groups and again, they're 13, 14 lions. There's not a lot of large game for them to hunt other than buffalo. Uh, kudu populations are fair, but there's not a lot of waterbuck. There's not a lot of zebra. There's not a lot of wildebeest, for instance. And I need to get my binoculars here. I think I might see something very funny in the distance. Anyway, so in this case, they break up into smaller hunting groups. All right, so that's very likely what's happening here. And they do take smaller regular prey and therefore a smaller group can consume it much more efficiently. You can imagine 13 lions with one impala, that's not going to fly. It's just not enough for everybody. been threatening to rain for a couple of days now and I think it's it's it today it's coming it's coming really getting a couple of harder drops now right I've only got one animal my bingo board and let's go and find out from Andrew how his bingo board is progressing all right
right, so we have um, elephant walk by on our row here, and uh, this one has definitely gone stationary for now. But they were walking around a little bit just before you came to me, and we're just going to wait for that. Uh, it's not too far from actually where we had them during the Escape to Nature experience. We spent a good few hours with them, not too far from that area. And the rest of the breeding group seems to be in the thicket line on our right hand side. Mm, whichever one's walking, Bika, let's take a look. Yeah, let's try that one. I think he might even walk. We're going to see if we can just uh, point the camera at this bull elephant here. Hopefully, he's going to walk around a little bit. Even if it's just a few steps, there's at least one little step. Come on, lift that back leg. There we go. There's another step. I don't know. Does that count as a walk by? <laughs> I hope so. He is sort of moving. But nevertheless, just beautiful to watch them, hey? In this nice open area, nice and warm in the sun here. Clean air, green vegetation. Ah, oh, it's bliss. Beautiful bull that, isn't he? It's gonna be interesting to see where they head to tonight. I think they're fairly comfortable down here for now. The water's not too far, plenty of food. I do believe tonight they'll probably stay within this basin area, which is this beautiful, vastly um, open area where it's almost like an escarpment. And if you're looking on the top section of the reserve, looking down over the basin, it's like a massive drop off, becoming almost like an escarpment. Okay, so we have a confirmation. So thanks, Darcy. You did confirm for me. So let's just mark this down before I actually forget. Elephant walk by. That's this one over here. So, so now it's going to start getting harder. We need that millipede walking and we need a warthog wallowing. I think the warthog wallowing is doable. But uh, this one, we're going to have to really look hard for that one. But not impossible. Three. We've done three. So we've got two more to go. Excellent. Brilliant, we're happy with that. <laughs> we'll take it. Oh, there's a few more steps over there. Shame, uh, they really are comfortable down here right now. Very, very nice. So you can notice that their body is a little bit brown, especially on the side there. We actually witnessed them during the escape to nature with them throwing mud on their bodies, doing quite a bit of mud wallowing, which is very nice to watch. And uh, the clay is obviously dried up a little bit. Beautiful. All right, we're going to send you back to Taylor, who has an elephant bull that she's busy watching with at the moment. So we'll send you through there. Well, I'm really hoping this elephant is going to turn and show us the back of its other ear because there's something on there that I need to show you desperately. But uh, unfortunately, this elephant is not going to do anything that I ask it to, no matter how much I beg and plead. So we'll just watch him eat. He's starting to settle down now. He's not walking as much, but uh, I... Um, Obviously, I'm, sh I'm sure you know this with elephant bulls, of course, when they are in must, they have this, this surge, 
this drive to push them out of areas that they normally would frequent. Because as elephant bulls get older, they do. They enjoy a, a spot, you know. They might have their favorite locations that they just go round and round. But as soon as they go into must, off they go venturing, searching for more females in estrus. Because it's actually quite difficult to find an uh, estrus cow. You know, not all cows are in estrus at the same time. Um, so, you know, the ones in the immediate vicinity might not be in estrus at all. So, you, you know, they'll have to sort of uh, push on out. And then they don't eat much at all. They kind of lose condition uh, quite a bit. Because eating is not their priority, so it's good to see that he is just stopping for the moment to have a snack. He might just be coming into mast, or he might be going out of, of mast, which could also mean, you know, that he's not particularly interested in the females right now. So, hasn't stopped, just taking trunkful after another. I'm actually going to grab my binos very quickly, because I want to see if I can't perhaps... I'm just double-checking on his neck, yes. Can you see every time that elephant moves its ears slightly, just on its neck, there's something white. There's a white dot. We'll see now when it flaps his ear a little bit, move it. There we go. Now we're going to have a close look. Watch when this elephant flaps its ear forward. You're going to look. There we go. Did you see it? Did you see that white thing? That is an engorged tick. And, and the interesting thing about this specific tick species, I cannot pronounce its um, its scient scientific name. Unfortunately, it's very difficult. But I shall try my best. But please don't um, please don't laugh at me. I'm sorry. I'm going to butcher it completely. But it's Amblyoma thelonii or thelonii. And um, this particular tick species, in its adult form, prefers elephants as its host species. So I would say that that is a tailored tick to an elephant and I have that on my bingo board so uh, well, uh, well yeah let me know if you think that I spun a good enough story this afternoon. As a safari guide you really need to be good at um, telling stories and you, yeah I don't know I feel like I'm actually out of practice of telling stories. I used to tell lots of stories <laughs> when I worked for Wild Earth many years ago. I got very good at it. Shatu Game Reserve has a glowing reputation as one of the most beautiful reserves in Southern Africa. And now, atop a soaring cliff overlooking the Majale River beneath the groves of Euphorbia succulents sits the stunning new Mashatu Euphorbia Villas. These eco-friendly villas echo their beautiful natural surroundings shaped to match the Mapanu parts of Mashatu. Enjoy earthy glamour with a consciousness for conservation woven into every element of these camps within the 32,000 hectare region.
Right, yes, we're at uh, Twin Dams. I've got a beautiful male impala. That's uh, just by itself here, but look how big that belly is. It's this time of food around, nice grasses, seeds, little flowers, leaves, and oh, they are quite a mix, uh, a feeder, and it's amazing just looking at him. So it is definitely one of the most dashing male impalas that I've seen around here, and as I said, here at Twin uh, Dams. They're usually in the bachelor herds, but uh, it looks like this male has decided to rather spend some time by himself. Which could be a little bit risky. You can understand it. Now he hasn't got any like in the bachelor herds where they've got more eyes and ears to really look out and listen out for any danger. But you can see he is quite alert at the moment. He's listening, not too sure what. But we are just waiting. And here's a little guinea fowl that's coming towards him as well. A little helmeted guinea fowl that's approaching the oh, okay, he's got friends. So he's not alone. So that's a good thing. So sometimes you'll see that safety numbers typically working here. If those guinea fowl see any predators, they'll warn him or, or vice versa. But I've got a dashing impala on my uh, bingo board, so if anybody has uh, confirmed that one, please let us know. And uh, I can at least put the sticker on the board. That looks like him. But that's nice, those little guinea fowl as well. I think they, where did they go? They also disappeared with him, eh? Yeah, there's, they're following him. Definitely he's got friends. Definitely a mix, a mixed friendship there. Interesting. Ah, thank you. We got a confirmation on the dashing impala. I shall put it here. Where should we? I've got a dashing impala here. Yeah, and I've got one. If I put it here, monkey, L, yeah. Oof. What do you think there? There you go. We're going to struggle with the owl, yeah. I'm going to struggle. I know we can go down to the wigs, but unfortunately with the rooster, it's not the greatest of signals with the rooster down there. So let's try and put it up here. Let's, yeah, let's play it up a little bit, I think. Let's just put it here. So it makes it a little bit more e exciting. So we can do the kingfisher, frog, warthog, giraffe. Or, I oh, see, that's an owl. So we can go down that way. What do you think? That's a good one. Yes, indeed. But let's go and try and look. I'm going to head towards Twin Dams to see if we can find those uh, yelling lapwings and maybe a ele elevated Egyptian goose for that side. So let's uh, do that while we are here. All right, well, I'm going to head over to Twin Dams. Uh, let's go over to Andrew, who is doing exceptionally well today on Bingo. Go, Andrew, go and see what he's got to show you. Uh, it seems like the competition is high and uh, so far it looks like uh, Cedric is catching up. We do have some monkeys over here, vervet monkeys, and uh, there are some young ones. Unfortunately they're not on the list but I think it's still quite nice uh, being so close to the elephants that uh, we would definitely quickly show them to you before moving on and hopefully finding what was it a warthog wallowing and the millipede walking beautiful eh? and for those who weren't uh, around for the escape to nature this morning uh, I did mention something which I'll mention now but uh, we myself and BK we weren't live but we did a few days ago we were watching some vivid monkeys and we noticed that the one female vivid monkey was carrying something and we looked closely and you wouldn't believe it it was a, a dead baby that had been dead for some time uh, maybe a week and a bit and it was just the the young one skeleton that it was carrying around it was absolutely heartbreaking and myself and bk we continued our drive and sort of made our way back towards camp and it was silent from then uh, we were definitely taken back by what we had seen I'd never seen that before. I have read it. it does happen with uh, primates across the board, but never seen it with my own eyes. And so it looks like they're just uh, hanging around the canopies of the trees. Yeah. Oh, there was a run by there. There we go. One just enjoying the shade there. 
Very, very smart animals, monkeys and uh, primates in general, extremely smart animals. They learn very quickly. Look at this one, just reaching for some of the fresh leaves, I'm presuming, that are growing off that sweet thorn there. All right, so in case you're wondering, we are in a celebration of Christmas, which is just around the corner, and we call it the 12 days of bingo, and uh, we are well into that now. And this will lead up all the way to Christmas, which is quite nice. Get all the naturalists involved and uh, the competition as well. And uh, the winner will be announced on Christmas Day, which is quite nice. So we'll be doing this every afternoon until Christmas Day. Lots and lots of fun. And then we'll have one more look at the elephant. Wonderful, look at that. Now I've got a feeling that we're going to need to probably drive around quite a bit to find this warthog in the wallow and then hopefully we come across a millipede along the way or vice versa maybe we look for the millipede and we come across a warthog in the wallow <laughs> whichever comes first <laughs> all right so Bedrick is doing some bird watching and birding so i'm going to send you through to him i'm hoping that it's not on his list there but we'll see <laughs> Andrew, <coughs> sorry, uh, oh, you're doing very well. You just need, I think you just needed that uh, wallowing warthog. Well, I'm hoping you can get it. Won't be bad. I'll be really, it'll be really good for you guys having it that side. But <coughs> I've got two Egyptian geese at the moment, and they are, <coughs> they didn't say too much about elevation. So, elevated uh, geese is, of course, a lot of people think maybe in the tree, but I think they are elevated above the dam area. So, there's dam, the dam goes down into like a dip. And of course, you see where the little blacksmith lap wings are, pretty much going into it and then up onto the bank, right? So you can see they are pretty much elevated right on top there in the grass, the two Egyptian geese. So, can we see that as being elevated, an elevation maybe? Um, never know. Please let me know because I have got elevated Egyptian geese on my on my bingo board, and uh, so pretty much elevated above sea level. I think 600 meters above sea level. So yes, elevated above that as well. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> but I love that. So it's always nice just to watch these Egyptian geese here at uh, little twin dams. As you can see, the one is just resting at the moment. And uh, the other one's just plucking away at the little seeds that's coming through. Thank you. So yes, it seems like uh, the scores are close there. So of course, Andrew three, Taylor five. Well done, Taylor. You guys have got two in a row. And Chris got two, and myself. Well, I've well, got three. Well, I'm hoping this is going to be the fourth one. These elevated Egyptian geese. We shall see. But uh, yeah, definitely, it was not stated on what surface they must be elevated on. Must have got some beautiful uh, yellow billed stalks. There's eight of them here at the Twin Dams. That's just stunning to see. You'll see him now. These stalks, yeah. How stunning is that? With a grey heron to the right. So, old Mr. Grey Heron thinking he is a stalk. But you can just see the size difference. So, if you just see a grey heron by itself, you think it's quite large. But now you can just see how big these uh, 
your little stalks are. I think they're about 130 centimeters tall. Oh, and the grey heron decided to, you know, I think he didn't want, yeah, he didn't want to play anymore. He decided to move away. Ah, oh, thank you very much. So, well, you know, just to say that it's like elevated onto a bank above uh, the dam itself. So it is the elevation. It is there, you know, as long as it's going above. So, yeah. All right. Thank you very much, every, everybody. Uh, the elevated Egyptian geese. There we go. Come on. You can stick. You can do it. All right. So that's fantastic. So I think this is going to be the best for a uh, wallowing warthog, which I know Andrew is looking for. A cackling hyena and a wandering wildebeest. Well, I might find that wandering wildebeest around quarantine area. A cackling hyena. I am going to head over to the hyena den, which is right here, the Juma clan, to see what's happening around there. So that's definitely going to force my my nose into that direction. And then, of course, a wallowing warthog. Well, I don't know if we can put down as uh, when uh, Igor was wallowing earlier as a wallowing warthog. Uh, so I don't know. You know, we have to see if we can, you know, play around with that. <laughs> but it is just beautiful just watching this, these birds yeah, at Twin Dams. And it's amazing. So we've got like eight of these yellow bull stalks here this morning over at uh, Buffalzook Dam. We've also had quite a few yellow bull stalks that side. So it's amazing how many of them are coming through. So also typical intra-African uh, migrants as well coming down for a certain time of the year, especially when the f frogs and tadpoles are quite abundant. And it's perfect for these stalks to end up in these areas, and especially in flocks like this. And it's the same as your white stalks that come through more in the marshy areas. They're all preening themselves, all kind of cleaning their feathers, making sure that those feathers are kept well maintained especially that these stalks do cover great distances when they do fly and being such a big bird as well so you yeah, we definitely don't want to make you know, definitely don't want to have uh, feathers that's all kind of messed up and uh, not in good nick Quite pretty. I mean, you enjoy those beautiful, like almost they've got like those vigilante red masks on their around the eye area. I think it looks quite interesting. Oh, we'll get a little scratch on the beak. <laughs> I never knew that a beak can actually itch. itch. Well, we decided to remain here with these lines. We've got a bit of sun coming out now, and we're just assessing the weather. We don't want to move too far from HQ, which is just behind us, purely because of the storms that we're building. And it's starting to look okay now. It looks like most of them have moved on, but they tend to build very quickly. So maybe after these lines, we might do a bit of a recce and see if we can perhaps head to Maybe Lepa Dam or you know, see if we can't populate our bingo board a bit more. So one thing we cannot control is the weather. But what a predicament to be in when we can stay with some lions. It's a nice predicament to be in.
this beautiful light. Why not? This is just spectacular. She's smelling something there. You now there's a whole bunch of impala and other stuff out on the plain. I even saw one wildebeest. And um, interesting to see what she's looking at. And just a reminder, I know you all love the wild show. You might have a lot of questions for James. So James will be doing a wild show hangout and on Sunday the 18th of December. That's today, by the way. And this will be at 8 p.m. tonight, Central African time. Where James is going to chat to you about what's going on and uh, how it's going and he's going to be there specifically to answer any questions that you might have. Just a reminder this is only for explorers, none other than the famous James Henry. We'll have a hangout tonight at 8 p.m. Brian wants to know if lions can sense movement on the ground. Brian, not through the ground. They can either see, hear, or smell. Sight is arguably their strongest sense, so they do supplement it with hearing and smell, which is also good, but their sight is phenomenal. Like most predators. I know it's been going down, I can sit with these lines the entire afternoon. Charlotte. Charlotte wants to know what the markings behind the lion's ears are called. Charlotte, I don't know if they have a specific name. We just call them follow me signs. And their purpose is to for lions to see the other lions while they hunt. So that's why the antelope can't see it from the front, but the other lions behind them can see them. And it helps them in turn to position themselves in the right spot for the hunt. But as if they have a specific name, I'm I'm honestly I'm not aware of it. It might might very well have a specific anatomical name. All right, I think we might just go for a bit of a bumble if the weather improves. But let's go over to Cedric, who is already on a bumble. All right, I'm going to stay towards uh, Ari Dam, and I agree, tr uh, Chris, that uh, it's, you know, the little drop something as well. Unfortunately, I might uh, have to 
heading soon to get a rain roof, but it's uh, of course the equipment and all that is uh, high priority. Now I'm gonna go up onto this side here, yeah, should be fine in this area, but I think I'll have to. Here to a Gurry Dam. Gurry Dam should be right. I think Gurry Dam should be a good place just to be closer to the camp in case this rain's going to come now. Um, I'm going to go look for the lapwings outside. Maybe I get uh, shouting lapwings. What is it? Yelling lapwings. Yelling lapwings, definitely. I'll take a look. But yeah, there's a few drops that's coming through now. I really thought it wasn't going to rain today. I was like, that's one person that can get their job completely wrong is the weatherman and he can still stay there. <laughs> yeah, but also the weather here is just, uh, sometimes it can become unpredictable. Not as unpredictable as the Western Cape. While we're going to continue towards Gurry Dam, I'm going to search around that area, area for yelling lapwings. Let's head over to Taylor to see if she's getting something for her board. I could not help myself. Look at this beautiful beetle. Isn't it stunning? Now, it's actually quite an easy uh, beetle to put into a family. And that all you have to do is have to look at its very, very long antenna. And uh, the fact that the antenna is the same length or e actually probably even longer than its body suggests that it is from the longhorn family. We did have a longhorn this morning. Um, this one, however, is an African a longhorn beetle. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the, <laughs> the Latin name because it's uh, again quite a mouthful, mouthful and uh, Latin is not my strong point but probably one of the more beautiful species and it, it is quite a, a large individual. And uh, we, we're actually really lucky at the moment to be seeing so many of them because most of the life cycle of long, longhorn beetles is actually spent as a larvae and uh, sometimes a larvae can last and stay that sort of that stage up to about five years and that's because they predominantly feed on wood I'm gonna try and see if we can see it again it's just gone back here oh it's coming out can you see it it's just moving so yeah I don't want to move the leaf around so we'll just be a bit patient we we'll get little glimpses of it every now and then um, oh, no. So yeah, so like I said, so I know that there's some species of longhorn beetles that actually stay up to the larval stage for up to five years. Can you believe that? Five years. That is a very, very long time. Oi, where have you gone? There he is over there. Isn't it beautiful? I mean, ideally, I'm going to try and just loop this branch onto something, onto another branch, so that we can see it. Sorry, everybody, for the... The crazy movements. Just, uh, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it to stay. Can you see it still? Not really. Is it hidden perfectly? Rather a tricky one. Oh, it's a bit tricky. I don't know if you can see its antennas just sticking up over there. Or oh, where? I can't even see where it is. I'm trying to look on the monitor now behind that one leaf of course typical typical let me you're getting little glimpses every now and then i'm just going to try and see if i can manipulate this little situation just slightly i'm just bending the branch and i'm going to twist it now perfect that is amazing there we go sorry everybody for um but yeah but anyways antennas are actually very important part did it fly it flew Bye. Sorry for annoying you. Um, antenna is a very important part of an insect, if not one of the most important parts, and that's because that is their sense organ, essentially. Um, so yeah, so that will basically be able to taste and uh, smell things, so chemoreceptors, and then the other thing that it can also do is detect sound. So without an antenna, whew, not going to have much luck and of course they've got exceptional ones oh i'm so sad it flew away but i hope you did get some nice screenshots it's always nice to see them yeah the bugs at the moment are just honestly spectacular and um i remember when we were doing bushwalks 
um, many years ago. And the bug life was good, but it's, I don't think it's as great at the moment because we were during uh, a, probably one of the worst droughts that South Africa has actually had. And now that we've had so much rainfall, it's been so great to see so much insect life coming back and so many different types of beetles and bugs and caterpillars and that type of thing that and even spiders that I have never seen before or and, and a lot of people hadn't been seeing for years. So quite cool. Let me just jump back in. Right. Not that we can add the longhorn beetle to our list, unfortunately. We, oh gosh. How many have we got? One, two, we've got five. If I could get a tortoise, I don't know, maybe. The weather looks like it's changing a little bit, but the clouds are still so high in the sky. I think it's building for something maybe later this evening. There's a little bit of a sprinkle every now and there, but, um, but you know, not really anything to complain about at all. When I speak, I probably spit a bit more than that. So you know, I'd like to try to get an Egyptian goose. So I think if we go down towards Twin Dams, we'll definitely get uh, some Egyptian geese and a yelling lapwing, that shouldn't be hard to find. Crowned lapwings are the best. Now, we used to see lots and lots of crowned wings, crowned wings, <laughs> crowned lapwings. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. That's quite ridiculous. Might need to go and see a doctor. Uh, so maybe we will go scout around there, but I don't know, have you been seeing crowned lapwings? No. Yes, Tina. Actually, let me pull my insect book out. Let me show you. You're inquiring about if those particular beetles, those longhorn beetles, uh, come in different colors. Bye-bye, Game Drive Radio. You're not going to be interested in beetles. Uh, okay, there should be a little bit further down here. Like I said, I need to get a, a slightly updated insect book. Here, let's look at all the, the different longhorns. They're actually quite a, quite a spectacular family. Um, so these are all the different sort of species that you can see over here. And look at the various colors. Now, the one that we saw is, is not shown in this book, I don't think. I did have a quick squiz because I have seen that uh, particular species before, uh, but not, not on, on wild earth, not on a live safari. So yes, they do come in, in lots and lots of uh, different colors. One that I have seen which was really amazing is the zebra longhorn. That's this one up here, number two. Look at those dramatic colors. Isn't it a beautiful? Camouflages so well. What I will do is I'm going to just quickly turn over. And let's see if there's any more. Here, yeah, there's a couple more uh, longhorn species too. This one is on my, on my list of bugs to see. A turquoise longhorn. I've never seen one before. They get quite large, um, but that would be really, it's also another really pretty one. I'm going to just see, I don't know if there's another page of longhorns. Just a couple more. Just, uh, just a few. Yeah, I've definitely seen the large green metallic, um, the large green longhorn. I've seen that one. I've seen a skunk longhorn. That was really cool. I actually saw that while I was at, at uh, Ingala. Very nice. Anyways, so there we go. A couple of different beetles. Um, but yeah, there's quite specific. There's even a, a longhorn beetle that mimics the meloid beetles, the blister beetles, but it's not actually toxic at all. Now, we search for something else. I've no idea what else is going to cross our path today. But we will just keep on keeping on. On the twelve days of Christmas, Wild Earth has planned to see Twelve hippos hiding, eleven weavers weaving Ten leopards leaping, nine ostrich dancing Eight lina lying, seven ellie swimming Six cheetah chasing, five buffalo Four calling cubs, three giraffes Two crocodiles, and a naughty vervet monkey
Alright, we just arrived here at Gurry Dam and once again we've got yellowbill storks. We've got two yellowbill storks and uh, two grey heron. Uh, that's really enjoying the wading through this uh, dam area. And then of course it looks like we've got some more on this dead tree. We've got some woodlands kingfishers, two beautiful woodlands kingfishers. And we've got as well another grey heron. I've got a hovering kingfisher. So, <laughs> where do we play this one? <laughs> but the thing is when the woodlands kingfisher, just before they dive into the water, they're actually like, it's like almost like a split second that they kind of hover and then they go in to double check. But we can see, I mean, uh, like we'll, we'll, we'll double check. I'm not going to check for it, like, you know, I can say claim it now. But we'll see. Even the grey heron is looking at them funny. Oh, did it go, did it go in the water? No. Okay, well, we shall wait patiently. But it is beautiful. I mean, look at those colorations on those kingfishers and even the patterns on the grey heron as well. I mean, the birds are just immaculate when it comes to, um, you know, the perfection of the lines and the, uh, the patterns on their body. Oh, the kingfisher doesn't want to look away. He's making sure that he's keeping an eye on this grey heron. But of course, the woodlands kingfisher does not uh, feed on fish. So mainly when they sit close to the water areas like this, it's just to, you know, dunk themselves into the water a little bit, have a quick little bath, and then fly back onto a perched area. Um, but they feed on, of course, uh, insects. So they're mainly insectivorous. So they're going for anything, any like beetles, um, grasshoppers, crickets, any of those arthropods. Well, even with the grey hair, he's not—he's not too interested in uh, going to for a fish. Oh, let's see. oh they just dived in. He, he just dived in. The kingfisher just dived in, but it's too late now. That's fine. Oh, they're gone. Uh, the thinking man. No, I don't think those uh, colorations help for anything. Uh, the thinking man. I think that's just. Uh, I mean, if you look at a lot of the kingfishers, a lot of them got those beautiful, striking orange, red beaks on them. So, but I don't think it really assists them. I mean, if you're looking at different kingfishers, like your uh, malachite kingfisher that uh, pretty much goes for little fish and all that, or you're looking at something like your woodlands kingfisher that goes for insects, they both got very much uh, uh, very bright beaks. Oh, here comes more. Look at this beautiful, these yellow bull stalks all coming in for a land. Dung, dung, dung. Absolutely stunning. <laughs> that is beautiful. One, two, three, four, five. Five of them now. So there was eight of them. Eight over at Twin Dams, five this side. And we got some there at uh, Buffelzook Dam as well. How many? I think we got five that side. I think it was five. Buffelzook Dam. Definitely, you can see how they're wading through. Now, one thing with a stalk is that they, <clears throat> not by sight, they mainly is by feel, by touch. So when they put their beaks in like that, even their legs, wading through the water, and anything that touches their beak and goes through their beak, they'll quickly snap. They'll snap and see if they can catch that fish or the frog. Look at this. Oh, he has a noble duck that's flying past. Sorry, no, that's why he's going to go past too far. Yeah, he might land. Beautiful male noble duck. But yes, as you can see, definitely it's a live and it's an interactive show. So if you've got any comments or questions that you want to send through, Please do so, or if you've got some amazing stories or your favorite bingo day, let us know. As you know, this is your safari. Look at the beautiful knob duck. So what happens is that uh, uh, knob on the beak itself starts growing in, of course, uh, the breeding season pretty much now. So you'll find it really gets to quite a, a large size. Not really used for anything, it's just more for the display for females, showing um, the age of him and, you know, if he is in... Uh, 
how can I say, if, if he's like ready to mate with any of the females around you. So it's very important. So you'll find the younger ones do not get as large as these old, older males or the males that's in prime. I'm just taking a look. I want to see if we can find a kill yet. Oh, look at that. Oh, wait, hold on. Nice one. There you go. Just bird life all over the show. I think we can do the whole birding today. This side. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's sweet. One, two, three. All the little ducks in a row. Little ducklings. Only three. I usually see them about with maybe eight or nine. Oh, I can imagine those parents are very protective over those little ones. That is too adorable. Mom in front, dad at the back. Making sure there's no intruders, no predators around. Mary, I think we can get like bird flu. Definitely. Uh, I mean, bird flu is a big, uh, a big issue. Uh, it sometimes comes through even here in uh, South Africa's side. So that's quite a big uh, issue. But uh, birds in this area, yeah, in the wild where we are now, um, diseases that they can get. Uh, well, I won't really know about any of those diseases with these poor wild birds, yeah. Then we won't get uh, foot or mouth. Um, so yeah, sorry, Mary, I can't uh, give you exactly on these birds, yeah. But I'm sure if uh, I know that the penguins had not too long ago had a little bit of an issue, I'm sure that uh, with uh, with bird flu that side. Is the trite eagle? The penguins that side. More the cormorants, I guess. So the bird or eagle, because of course eagle knows a lot about the seabirds and all that, working many years down there in uh, at the coast. And so he's just telling me more the cormorants. A lot of the bird flu that's been affecting the cormorants around that area. So yes, thanks, you. Karen. So you said there were four new, uh, uh, new little ducklings. Oh, and a snake of some kind looked to have got one last night. Oh, that is. Uh, that's a little bit of a sad story right there. Okay, thanks, Karen. That must have been a shame. So now there are only three left. Well, I'm hoping that the, these parents really keep these three in, in safety somewhere. Because they're all so cute. Excuse the box in the background. That's just a box for, of course, for our dam cam. And, uh, and it's just for one of the spotlights around here. But we are going to slowly head, uh, I think, back towards uh, the campsite. And uh, as the rain is slowly but surely seem, seeming like it's uh, increasing here. So I'm hoping that we can get back to the camp and just kind of put on our uh, rain roof. So what do you think? Let's start doing that because it's our equipment here. All right. Well, birding around here at Curry Dam has been phenomenal. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Sorry, Aaron. I'm going to go past you there. Who's going to sneak past you? Go, Cedric, go. We do not want you to get wet. Hopefully you've got an umbrella of some sort or <laughs> a rain jacket like Taylor's fashionable rain jacket yesterday. But our zebras took off. We are now just waiting to see what else might come to the water. Oh, generally this is the time for the black rhinos that they start to come to the water. And sometimes the elephants, however, of course, every single day is different. Even if you've got exactly the same weather pattern and temperatures and everything, the animals do whatever they want, of course.
just want to make sure I'm not sure if that is a logodile or a rock or something it is a nothing <laughs> you know I look at this camera every single day and then these rocks these logs everything still make me second guess myself but of course you know it's better to rather make sure as opposed to just thinking you saw nothing and then potentially missing anything wonderful i actually missed out on a pangolin and pup sighting once because uh, one of my guests <laughs> saw something in the beginning of the drive and only told me about it when we got back to the lodge so that was a sad day for me but <laughs> yes literally ever since that day I just just decided that I will absolutely make sure to check everything Now, generally, if the rhinos start to come along, at least two of them I have picked up with their patterns or their roots. <laughs> generally, it is from this side that they come out from the tree line. Of course, you know, it can be from anywhere. Animals don't necessarily have a certain route they follow every single day. However, they are creatures of habit for a lot of the time. So just want to double check here you never know maybe we see a unicorn appearing from the forest Russell, you are asking how do these animals manage it between the trees and the rocks and just this weird topography. I promise you I ask myself that question every single day. <laughs> of course, you know, Ukukweo is a much different habitat and topography and all in all just landscape than what we are used to. But of course, this waterhole we have over here is the largest salt lake we have in Africa. So all of these rocks and everything you see around, that is calcrite, calcrete, sorry. And um, that is full of minerals and salt and nutrition for the animals, believe it or not. Because as we know, the geology of an area will, you know, determine the vegetation you find there, which will, of course, determine the animals you will find there, like the vegetarians, the herbivores. And that, of course, finally will determine the predators. But I mean, if you think about all of that, Okokoyo literally has all of the animals, you know, like the big five, apart from the buffalo. Of course, buffaloes are browsers. So I think this is not really a wonderful area for them. But I mean, we've got lions here. We've got zebras, wildebeest. Then you sort of do step back and ask yourself, who would want to live here <laughs> if you were an animal? But of course, you know, when the animals are brought into this world, they don't ask or have like a little tick list or a preference as to where would you like to go? Would you like to live in Juma, Okukweo, Mashatu, Pridelands? <laughs> they really just adapt and of course acclimate. Here in Okukweo, it's very hot and humid. We are only expecting rain within the next month or so, hopefully sooner. But of course, due to the wonderful global warming that we cause, the wet weather patterns are changing absolutely everywhere. But anyway, I will continue to summon the animals and uh, send them an email, see what I can do for all of you. <laughs> but while I do that, I'm going to send you over to Taylor 
and see what she's up to. I hope there's lots of animals that come down to the water holes. We're also at one, we're at Treehouse Dam, and naturally we have found the blacksmith lapwings. There are four individuals that I can see. However, of course they are silent today because I need a yelling lapwing. They will be mute. Typical. Normally these birds make such a racket all the time. But I suppose there's not much to shout about at the moment. There's no little three-banded plovers encroaching in their territory or the Egyptian geese, you know, aren't nearing. <laughs> They're on the other side of the dam. Anyways, these birds can be super dramatic at times, so we will check quarantine because if there's crowned lapwings, they are definitely going to squawk a bit. But it looks like it's a combination of um, adults and there was one that I could see that almost looked like it didn't have its full adult coloration uh, just yet. But I don't know which one it is now. I think it's that one on the far left. Maybe not. But anyways, maybe there's two. Maybe there's just a male, adult male and female. Actually, yeah, that could be it. And maybe two, two youngsters. But they kind of almost look the same size now. But that's really it. Uh, we are also going to start making our way towards camp because it's Drizzling a little bit. And Mason, with regards to their legs, now you've inquired about why they're so thin. Um, birds don't necessarily need to have big bulky legs because they don't weigh very much. So unless it's something along the lines of an ostrich or an emu or one of the bustards, they've got slightly uh, thicker legs and um, but for the most part these birds have you know, very 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 little legs however sometimes with a thick well, with a thick knee you might see that the, the the joint where the supposed knee is if you will looks slightly uh, enlarged um, but there is one bird called a black wing stilt we don't see them very often uh, in the sabi sand every now and then the dams uh, they have got very long legs in fact for in proportion to its body size it's the bird with the longest legs you can imagine that the name stilt is um, is appropriate because it does look like they're walking on them. But yeah, so their legs are nice and long. They do wade through the water. If they had very, very little legs, it, they'd be quite uh, restricted as to how far into the water they could go. Like a three-banded plover, for an example, can't venture in as deep. Ah, and uh, well, I'm not sure what Chris has but I've been told that it's something that's quite large and quite heavy, so why don't you go and check it out? All right, finally some elephants. All right, so now we're sitting with a situation. We've got two elephants on our bingo board today. Embarrassed elephant and trumpeting elephant. Right, so none of them are trumpeting at the moment. And I'm trying to see if there's any one of them that might appear to be embarrassed. Right, you look at the youngsters, maybe they'll get embarrassed by something. Maybe that young one is trying to hide behind his mommy. Maybe he's embarrassed. Lovely, lovely stuff. Must say, oh, here's another bull coming in. We'll get him now just as soon as he comes into frame later. And um, that's interesting. That was a trumpet. A very short little trumpet there. I'm not sure if you heard that. Then it could be a trumpeting elephant.
Right, I'm going to stay with these Ellie's for a while to see if there's not some of them that are embarrassed or trumpeting. Let's go over to Cedric in the meantime. So out on the bumble. Um, Philemon's cut line got our rain roofs on because it started to rain. So now we're all set to go. So I think my next best bet of uh, this bingo board is definitely head down towards uh, Trias Dam. Trias Dam has been definitely my old faithful. And uh, I don't know, for some reason, it's always produced um, so many amazing, amazing sightings outside. So, and maybe some great ones for the board, a laughing hippo, maybe that uh, hippo's in the dam. It's getting to that this time of the day. It might be yawning and maybe grunting. And, a bit and laughing for us so we shall take a look oh we also got the yelling lapwings outside definitely those, uh, that pair of lapwings around um, uh, around the treehouse dam are always quite fascinating Ooh. or we can maybe spot a, a lesser spotted uh, tailor you never know maybe is there a lesser spotted tailor on this uh, on this board let's uh, Oh, it would be fantastic if I had that one on this board. But as you can see, we have got uh, the Lissus <laughs> Sailor. <laughs> it's a, uh, oh, your packet jacket is amazing. It's amazing. That is the, the, the outfit. Re reuse, recycle. Oh, there we go. That's not too bad. The bag lady, the bag girl. <laughs> the bag lady. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, are you going to go do your rain roof? Fantastic. All right, have a fantastic bag lady. <laughs> Cheers, bye. All right, well, that was a funny. <laughs> Definitely they got the right outfit for, the, for this kind of weather. Perfect. I think I need to get myself a bag like that. I think it's ideal. It's, uh, can I, you can even see the, the, the bingo shirts through the bag. Hmm. That is fun. It's just like this monitor cover. All right, let's uh, go towards uh, Treehouse Dam. Maybe I've got some more luck there. I don't know what uh, Taylor's got on her board, so we do not talk about the boards there because I think it's all about uh, the plan, the planning, and uh, you never know. So, yeah. I want to see which way she can that way. I think what I'm going to do then, I'm going to do Treehouse, Treehouse Dam Road. I think that'll be a bit of I'm going to make a combination of the thorns and the bark. That's what I'm going to do. Basically, just a very big open system. But aren't they pretty? Thank you for joining us and have a fantastic morning.
So this lap wing is throwing a little bit of a tantrum. Sorry, Taylor, if I could send you the lap wing, I would for your bingo board. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, as I said yesterday, this lap wing does have a chick. I have not been able to locate or see the chick here today. But I'm assuming hopefully it's still around and it's still all right and safe. But that rhino did not seem seem phased at all <laughs> not one bit but how lucky are we just to be able to you know check the mo check the water holes and uh oh i think i see it <gasps> is that you cutie pie just bear with me Ah, there's the little chickadee. <laughs> Cutie pie, I finally found you. Danielle, you are saying, looks like the universe. Listen to my calls. Thank goodness, because, you know, sometimes it doesn't work. And then I seem like a completely <laughs> crazy person. Very, very silly, but that does not matter. Just like Cedric, you know, an eagle that plays in mud. When you are a naturalist or even just a wildlife enthusiast, you really do have to entertain yourself. So sometimes I just say, you know, I'm summoning the animals, but really it's just for my own entertainment. Oh, that chickadee is so small. Especially in comparison to the rhino. Where's your parent now? You see, this is what I, what I don't get now. So if you look just to the edge of the water hole, there where it sort of comes together to the right, you'll see a tiny fluff ball moving around and that is the lap chick. Lap chick, goodness, okay, that works. <laughs> the blacksmith lap wing chick. But one of the parents were just here and then it took off. All right, well, Tulu, technically I won bingo now because I finally showed the blacksmith lap wing here in Ukukwayo, which is almost nearly impossible amongst these rocks. <laughs> but I'm going to send you over to Andrew in Amakala so we can see how he is doing with bingo. All right, thanks very much, Lisa. So we do have a couple of interesting animals here, just they're not doing what we need them to do on the board. And uh, the first one is this jackal that's just doing a little bit of a run by. How cool is that? Definitely on the search for something. And it's just amazing when we stopped here and we're watching the zebras and then suddenly we notice the jackal. So often enough, when you stop and you just watch a little bit, other things start to reveal themselves, like this jackal did. I just want to just have a look at the list here and see if the jackal's on there. Oh, there is. Jumping jackals. We need this jackal to jump. Come on, do us a favor. And sometimes they do jump, especially when there's flying ants or elates, which are termites with wing parts, and they're flying around. Jackals jump as high as they can to catch them. But there's no lates at the moment. Beautiful. Look at this one. Very, very nice looking jackal. Come on, Vika. Give us a nice jump. I oh, definitely stopped to smell something there, I'm not sure what. Maybe it's got an insect or something. Roy, good afternoon, thanks for your comment there. So this is a full-grown adult one. Uh, this this one is uh, it's been an elf for a while now 
But uh, just to fill you in, Roy, of course, you've been watching, I'm sure, the jackal pups. Oh, there's a second one. No way. Had no idea. Yeah, exactly. Um, those jackal pups that we were watching growing up, they've actually grown up very quickly. Uh, so much so that they are not so much den bound anymore. They actively follow the adults. And let me tell you, they are tricky to keep up with now. We've tried, but uh, they are in and out, weaving through the bush, and they grow very, very quickly. And what this one managed to find there, they do find all sorts of things to eat. They'll even scavenge sometimes, and even eat carrion. And then insects, which I'm sure this one has found a little hot spot of insects there. And what is above the earth's surface doesn't compare to what insects are beneath the earth's surface, being a subterranean. And the zebra just moving through. So we actually stopped with these zebras, but we need zebras fighting. And uh, these ones are definitely not. This is a mom and a foal. And it's also impressive how quickly zebra foals grow. Very, very quickly. I would give this one about just uh, maybe five weeks old. Maybe six weeks old. So growing very quickly. And they're just magnificent. Eh? And it's a nice area too to view them. It is very open out here. Oh, the zebras are just here. There we go. I think they're really enjoying this nice green grass that has started to, to grow after the rains. White mane. Uh, they sort of do bark. When they see a predator, you have this wah, wah, wah sound. It's almost like a yelling sound. But they make a variation of calls, but nothing like a bark like a, like a dog does. It's more of a yelp, but that's an alarm call for when there are competition or predator around, many a predator. So if you ever do go on safari, white mane, and you're hearing jackals, and you hear that wah, wah, wah sound, you must investigate that. The jackal's definitely seen something that he's not too happy about. They make these screeching sounds as well, screaming, if you will. Now zebras have got the most beautiful call. It's really a splendid, splendid sound to hear. And uh, also, when you hear them alarm calling, they also make a the sound, and it's it's actually quite a pleasant sound, even though for them they are making the sound because they're unhappy about something. And there's a red bull oxpecker, it looks like, on the one zebra by his tail on the left. Okay. Now that one on the far left there. Uh, I think the oxpecker has moved off now. I don't see it there anymore. Or is it on the tail still? Just enjoying the sun as it is now. And I think we're going to battle to find one of the animals we're looking for, the warthog that is wallowing. Because now the temperature has cooled down a bit and warthogs do wallow when it's hot. So I think we've sort of passed that window, but you never know. You just keep trying, keep going. David, uh, Thanks for your, your question. So jackals, they can take things down alone. Um, your, so a lot of the baby animals, so from your wildebeest, calves, zebra foals after birth, um, red hartebeest, blessbok, young, um, they take the young very, very easily. 
and uh, of course the impala lambs in the lambing season a lot of them actually get taken by jackal i would think more than probably more than of the ones that get predated upon probably at least 30 percent or more maybe get taken by jackal especially on amakala reserve because uh, amakala does have a quite a big population of jackal very successful out here and the rest of the time anything they can overpower so it's mainly mice and mongoose hares and things like that but then jackal that are in a group or, or jackal that are in pairs they can of course take down bigger things so if there's any an injured animal that's busy dying um, jackal are able to finish off even an animal like the size of a zebra if it's busy dying and it's very weak and can't fight back you know, a jackal will definitely try and finish it off but it's not as quick as it sounds when it comes to jackals and the bigger animals that are maybe dying they usually take chunks out of it as the animal's still alive and it's it's quite hectic to watch So the only things I've seen jackal take was uh, a mouse once and then just recently the jackal pups that we've all been following there was a brown hooded kingfisher nesting in an art park burrow right next to the nesting site or the, the denning site of those young jackals and uh, one, one morning we were there and uh, the jackal pups went in there and I just heard this big screaming sound and I realized that they'd gone into the burrow and had snatched the brown hooded kingfisher and then took it out it's not very common to see that Very nice area this. Isn't this just picturesque? Now, I'm presuming the zebras will probably sleep here tonight where it's nice and open. Sometimes black wildebeest are also in this general area. Yeah, so there's also black wildebeest that sometimes come out here and bless buck. They sleep in this vastly open area. And that's a good strategy to have. I'd rather sleep in the open. And hopefully when predators are around, that when you open your eyes, that uh, you see the predators before they get too close. That's the whole strategy with the, the plains game, or the animals that live in these open, vast areas, is uh, not to go into the thickets, because uh, they won't be able to run as efficiently as what they could in this open plain over here and to sleep in the open plain accommodates them well because they'll hopefully see predators from a far distance and then if there is any trouble they can run off and pick up speed in the open area hey, that is such a nice shot that Look at that. Right, look at this. So what have you got there? Is it a bless box you see there? What is it? <laughs> in the there he is there. <laughs> yeah, the glare is pretty strong out here. Oh he just snorted there. Nice bless box ram this. Just gonna check on the list here. I don't see bless box on our list. Why not? Mm, no, it's not on the list. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. Can't help but feeling that uh, we are slowly falling behind here. Yeah?
They're very similar to a bunter book. A blessed book. They've got uh, the, the splits in the white in the face, you'll notice. Whereas a uh, bunter book has got a solidly solid white face. Look at what we found. I don't know if you remember on the sunrise safari, I mentioned that last night on the sunset safari, I had found a chameleon. And yesterday for the bingo safari, I actually needed a climbing chameleon. But uh, it was right at the end of the show and Marib's was on the move. So I had to sacrifice a point there. But I thought that I would come back this afternoon and have a look at it. And it was quite cool because I, I, I basically just dropped a pin just to remember exactly which bush it was. And I, I took two steps up to it. I kind of looked lower down because that's where it was uh, uh, last night lower down on the branches and I sort of gazed up and I saw it immediately that's quite a fun thing to do if you ever find a chameleon go and check it out again the next day and you can get a really good look at it obviously it's not quite sleeping just yet we know at night time they typically perch on the end of the branches and go to bed they'll shut their eyes nice and tight but this little flap neck chameleon is quite sweet. Not massive. I'm not going to go up too close to it because I actually don't want to, um, I just don't want to bother it too much. Um, I've already put a little bit of lighting because it's so dark underneath this jackalberry. It's a young jackalberry that's growing here. Um, so it's a little bit on the difficult side to see. And it is quite chilly tonight. I don't want it to have to use unnecessary energy uh, resources. So that's okay if I just stand back over here. Something that I always like to talk about, and I mention it all the time because I suppose, you know, there's lots of old, you know, old wives tales out there that we were all told to believe. And this is, you know, really just because we didn't understand the way the, way the world works and especially the way that nature sort of works. And one of the things that I love about the flat neck chameleon, which is also one of the most widely distributed uh, species of chameleon throughout South Africa, but also into Africa, is the fact that they have got natural camouflage. And almost all chameleons have got this natural camouflage. Some of them might be uh, more suited to their environments where they sh tend to show more browns. However, the flat neck chameleon, and it's actually got some striking coloration going on at the moment, it's predominantly showing um, the greens and then, you know, they're not a solid color either. So they have different shades of those sorts of greens but they can't change color on command as if to say right today I am going to blend in with a rock not like a cuttlefish or like octopus um, for an example they do they rearrange their chromatophores to blend in with their surroundings which is a phenomenal thing to do but instead it is a physiological response to an external source so something or an environmental um, stimulation for an example so if there was maybe if this was a male chameleon and a female chameleon around he might get quite excited and change sorts of colors or if it was another male if there were two males then of course they're going to be quite aggressive to one another and that's when you're going to start to get those sort of uh, darker and, and and bright colors coming through so you might see blacks and reds and oranges um, are quite typical uh, on flap neck chameleons um, but other than that or then if they of course if they're really really hot then they tend to go lighter gray coloration and that of course helps reflect the um, the heat and that's exactly it is that they have got um, reflective cells essentially in their skin and, um, and which is pretty epic so they'll expand and contract them and that is what creates the different sort of colors but I think it's really beautiful but I think I'm not going to disturb this chameleon too much longer I think we've had a really nice view of it and I would like for this chameleon to stay in this tree so that we can come back and visit it on other days but if we do disturb it too much luckily it actually hasn't moved around at all it's sort of frozen and staying in the same place hoping that I have not seen it Yes, Alice in Wonderland, chameleons absolutely have uh, good eyesight. It's, it's what really helps them catch their prey. They probably don't have the best sense of smell. Um, and with their eyes, they're able to end up 
independently move from one another and they can move them 360 degrees they're constantly scanning around for something to eat so eat lots of different things um, but predominantly arthropods so various insects from grasshoppers to beetles to ants I mean you name it and uh, also very opportunistic just like everything else in the animal kingdom uh, they they'll protrude their tongues out with great force and and catch their prey uh, that way but thank you very much chameleon that was very kind of you and I hope that we do get to have a look at it again. This is actually where I was wandering around this morning and we were looking at all sorts of uh, beetles and, well, I think there was the metallic longhorn beetle that was here. There was a bunch of things, lots of wasps and all sorts. The comedian was probably just watching me going, hey, you're so stupid. But I knew it was there. I just didn't want to waste the opportunity uh, and thought now would be a really good time. Wonderful, right, I'm gonna start the car now. We're going to carry on driving. I think we're going to do a quick loop back and go and check out those buffalo. Cedric is bumbling about and I don't know what he still needs on his bingo board. Yeah, so well, I'm at the Juma clan den site, still in Little Gari, and it looks like we've got Koa, and I'm not too sure who is on the right hand side there now. But it looks like Koa is this, uh, the, the one that's still standing up, and I'm trying to figure out who the female, it looked like, maybe, I'm trying to figure out, it might be a Swazi or in, uh, in the Belev. I'm just, I'm just got here now it just uh, so yeah if you got any inf information or idea please let me know but I'm just trying to look it looks like Swazi to me oh look at that a good old aloe grooming making sure look how it's nicely groomed up I'll double check if it is yeah just want to see oh good old stretch yeah it looks like Swazi uh, she's now heading away from the den site lovely uh, leaving or co op all by itself here. I'm sure maybe the other ones might be around here somewhere. Uh, I'll just uh, double check on that. I don't want to see here quickly. Sorry. So I do have cackling, <laughs> cackling hyenas on my board, but definitely they're not cackling at the moment. So I'm not going to put anything up now. But I'm hoping that we do hear something sooner or later. I'm just going to rest now. It's still this uh, hyena den still inside El Gari, so it is still quite a bit of a tough one for us. Now and again to view them through uh, these branches and the leaves, but at least we got, at least we can still see them. That's the main thing. And I'm still wondering what's in the belly, what's happened to her cub as well, um, Masangita. Let's see what's here. I just want to go through here because I'm sorry, I thought it might have been Masangita, but I might be wrong there. Um, I might be my mistake there, so I'm just going to quickly double check and see if it's not Masangita, but I'm sure it looked like Koa. Be safe from where we are now. But yeah, I am going to hang around here definitely for a while because another big thing is there is a female leopard known as Langa, and she is just uh, south uh, east from where we are now, not too far inside uh, uh, Little Gari. So I'm also hoping that uh, she might make her way up towards uh, Gari Main, towards uh, Juma. I haven't seen Langa for for such a long time. I'm really, really keen to see that female before I head out. I'm hoping I'll get some information from the other guys about Langa. Uh, Charles, look, the thing is, if I, you know, goes out and looking for some food at night time, I mean, if the potential is there that there's an injured uh, 
uh, injured uh, impala or warthog or something or like nighttime while warthogs will be in a burrow, burrow but say impala or even a kudu or something like that they're going to take that opportunity and hunt that thing down but if it's uh, of course if there's food that's on the ground and there's one and there's a leopard that's busy feeding on an impala yeah of course and it's going to scavenge and it's going to definitely rather try and steal that food off from uh, that leopard uh, but the, people always think they do just scavenge, but trust me, at night time they do their own hunting as well. Especially this time of the year when there's a lot of impala lambs around and yala calves, things like that. Uh, they're going to take that opportunity and if they see something, they're definitely going to go for it. Let's see where that other one was. I want to see where Swazi went there. It should look like Swazi. So I might be, so I might be mistaken here. Yeah, sorry, I'm just going through my stuff because it's very difficult for me to... Is in Debele. Okay, thank you so much. So it's Swazi's sister in Debele. I saw the light color on her, but uh, thank you so much for that. Um, and it's amazing how her scar on her head has healed. And remember how big that scar was? Yeah, I think it was what, about two months ago. Yeah, about two months ago, she had like some running, maybe what looked like for, with lions or something, because she had bite marks and scratch marks on her hindquarters, on her head, a huge open wound on her head and it's amazing it healed so well that you don't even see it anymore but the rain is starting to come down nicely now you can get this real beautiful fresh smell that's coming through <laughs> I definitely I'm not gonna get any cackling hyena yeah definitely a sleepy eye, you know, but not a cackly eye, you know. But yeah, they uh, have definitely chosen this den site for for a good period of time now. I mean, it's been here now, sure, uh, a month and a half. Been at this den site a month, month and a half. That's a definitely a good period. Well, while we are going to hang around here, yeah, definitely, and maybe hopefully we get all longer, let's go over to Chris in Pridelands to see what's happening on his safari. Quiet, uh, other than the lions and the elephants, well, which was beautiful by the way. Um, other than that, oh, I'm kudu I've not seen, buffalo I've not seen, not even tracks. Might be the weather. It's turned cold now, of all things. And um, I see another wave of rain drizzle approaching from the south. It does look a little far there, but this temperature drop tells me it might just rain again. <laughs> so we'll just keep an eye on it. But there's a sudden, sudden temperature drop, which is, in my opinion, it says rain's on the way. Right. Hmm, I wonder if we should kind of like head a bit more north. Yeah. Let's do that. Just along our boundary, so we'll probably just keep our camera onto the bush. Okay, so now we managed to establish that the lions are back. Now, next step is we need to find out where the pixie pan female is finding herself at the moment. Because I do have a leaping leopard here as well. Whether she's going to leap, I don't know. All the ladies are coming. Jason, while I'm being cinematic. Hey! 
From the sublime to the ridiculous, everybody. Of that ethereal and unattainable thing, the happy marriage. Be nice to see him. <laughs> this is an unbelievable afternoon. All right, I'm still sitting here with uh, hyenas. Please let me know, because I haven't, I hardly get to see these hyenas too often. Um, but, uh, you know, over the last week, um, month and a half since I've been in the little gari, um, I'm trying to figure out this. It's either Missingita or Koa. And I've got a feeling it's Missingita, because if it wasn't uh, in the Bele, busy pretty much grooming. Uh, Masangita can understand because it's the auntie, and the bell is the auntie of Masangita. Um, but yeah, uh, but standing by, Debbie's. Okay, I'll, I'll hang back still this side. Thanks, Dibs. I appreciate it. So, just talking about uh, Langa, so she's just south of. Um, the hyena den, not too far south of hyena den. And apparently, she just went to go and lie down again. Again, the other guy just starting his vehicle up now. So, I am definitely gonna hang back a little bit here because her general direction is coming northwest um, towards the Juma. So, and of course, there's no the guys just leaving in now. So he's just leaving Langa now and he's leaving her pretty much an open sighting but we can't go in there so we're just gonna hope that she will pop out here sooner or later and not far. I mean give and take maybe 50 meters south of where that hyena den is that's where I've got the guys audio oh look at the beautiful rainbow absolutely stunning do I have a rainbow on my bingo board? I've got a, a rainbow of dragonflies. Oh, can you see <laughs> oh, that side? Look at this. Oh, I think you can just see that rainbow in a little bit. Kind of. Uh, not really. Let's see if we can get it up there. There it is. Oh, there it is. You can see a little bit of the rainbow coming through. And it is so beautiful. Definitely a rainbow with hopefully some some surprises at the end of that one. 
I'm really holding thumbs. Unfortunately, we've got our rain roof on, so we can't really get the entire picture of uh, this rainbow. But wow, 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 wow. Good old rainbow for bingo day. Definitely stunning. Uh, sorry, Chulu, go, um, go with that to uh, again. I'm just, uh, just looking at this rainbow, see if we can get a better shot there. Uh, Logan, yeah, I'm sure they do. I'm definitely, I mean, that's the whole reason why they moved a den site. Huh? So they know that they were kind of compromised by Mulawati, the male leopard, um, at the other den sites. And I'm sure they knew that, look, and there is uh, a little bit, there is mourning that goes uh, on between the members because they got so used to each other. I mean, it's the same as any anything. You know, you know if you've got a family member and all that, and, you know, at the end of the day, you know who's in your in your family, you know who's part of your clan, you know who's part of your pack, you know who's part of uh, the herd. And uh, so at the end of the day, if somebody goes missing, I'm sure there is going to be that uh, that sense of, uh, how can I say, um, a, a mourning and knowing that somebody has uh, disappeared and maybe we should look for him, maybe, we, you know, where is he? And I'm sure that does happen with them, with the, with the, with the Juma clan. I don't think it's a long longevity of it. I don't think it happens for a long period. I think it's more of a kind of a, you know, a short time. And I mean, I remember in Tandi with uh, with uh, Bahuti when Bahuti went missing with and, and Tandi was, sure. I mean, Tandi was calling for days, for days looking for Bahuti, and uh, he just went missing. Uh, we don't know how and what happened. But yeah, it, you can see she was getting angry, she was getting frustrated, she was getting a little bit, uh, how can I say, uh, down, uh, not finding, of course, uh, that young male leopard of hers. I think I'm just keeping an eye at the back of the vehicle as well. I'm hoping that we can just uh, take a look there and just in case that Lunga decides to come, I don't want her to sneak past us. While we sit here, while we're going to have a, a little bit of patience around here with the Juma clan and hoping Langa does come north, let's head over to Pridelands with Chris as he's got a fantastic uh, sky to show you. Well, this is going to be a crazy sunset. There's lots of high, high, very, very high lying clouds, but there's a gap. And there's that one that I've all been, 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 been speaking about, saying if we're gonna have clouds up high with these a gap in the sun, we're gonna see some, the proverbial gold. Watch this unfold. This is going to be insane. And this is my second last evening here. Tomorrow night will be my last evening for this well, short emergency shift that I had to come and do. And then uh, Tuesday morning will be my last safari for 2022. The last one. And really the last one this time around. <laughs> I wasn't planning on extending a shift. I'm always glad to help out where I can. But yeah, so on the 21st, I will be heading down to the Cape for two weeks to go and spend the festive season there. And then I should be back very early in January, around the 5th, afternoon of the 5th. I'll be back, so I'm just taking a two weeks break. And then I'll be back on the 5th of Jan. Also just for around about two weeks, not a very long shift. It'll be nice to start the year off 
nicely here at Bradlands. Ronnie, Ronnie, we've got something in common there. Ronnie says, can't get enough of the African sunsets. Now, Ronnie, I've been born in this continent. I've seen this unfold for over 40 years in my life. And it doesn't get old, ever. You can still sit and appreciate the sunset and sunrise. This is going to be a magical sky. It's, it's actually wider than you think. I mean, even if I look up, you can see this. I mean, the, the lens can probably not even go as wide to see the entire show or the entire expanse of this. I'm going to have to somehow try and do a nice little mental photo of this in my brain. I wish our brains could have taken photos. That would have been amazing. All the viewers saying they love the sunset. And then I must have an awesome break. Yeah, well, I'm still here for tomorrow. Tomorrow is still my last, well, practically my last full day. And like I said on Tuesday morning, will be my last safari drive for the year. And for those who've not been following us for the last couple of days, remember that we are in our 12 days of Christmas bingo. So what it entails, it's a Christmas themed bingo. So our bingo boards will be filled with all sorts of things from turtle doves, leaping leopards, embarrassed elephants, wallowing warthogs, opportunistic oxpeckers, and all sorts of things. And this will be every day for 12 days, and I think we're in day number five now, if I'm not mistaken. So every sunset drive will be filled with this holiday fun, and the final winner will be crowned on Christmas Day. On Christmas Day, the winner will be crowned. Wow, look at that sky now. That's amazing. That's magical. Entire sky is just lit up. Always, always a treat. Welcome back to the beautiful Okokoyo and uh, Chris what a stunning sunset Yours is in a little bit more of a hurry than ours is here in Okokoyo But of course, you know, Namibia is a bit more north of where you find yourself But I would say another good 20 minutes or so and then it'll slowly start to go down That is what I love about summer, but also this location you know we really do have daylight for quite some time and uh, that really does give us the opportunity to look for any last minute sightings or anything exciting perhaps happening but it really is just so beautiful our rhino has finally taken off we do however have some zebras and we also had a giraffe i'm not sure where the giraffe went though
picking up some dust for the afternoon. <laughs> the dust is not settling. It's only now getting started up. But no baby with them, unfortunately. These animals, you know, I ask for results and they don't bring it. <laughs> now, of course, it's always a treat to see any species out here, whether it's a tiny lapwing, a big elephant, a dusty zebra. This truly is such a special location. Are we super zoomed in? Uh -huh. Right, bumbling, bumbling, bumbling around. Actually looking for the buffalo again, but I have no idea where they've gone. They moved from their position, but I didn't see any tracks crossing Vuitella access. So I was wondering if they've maybe come down towards Galago Pan, but who knows? or if they have perhaps gone back towards the towards Gari Gate, that's also a possibility. So it's tricky now with so many drops of rain on the road, it's not as easy to find them. We're just sort of looking. I'm gonna actually get the spotlight out soon. Yeah, actually now, yeah, they've definitely come here. You can see on the soft sand that they've sort of, there they are, woo! -hoo! They are a Gallagher pan. Perfect. Let me turn my lights off. Hello, Buffalo. It's me. I'm just going to poke my nose through here. Don't get a fright. Don't get a fright. Hi. Look at all of them. There's so many of them. No, don't run. That's really unnecessary. Absolutely not necessary at all. You can see they're a little bit on the nervy side, but that's to be expected, especially now that it's starting to get darker and they don't quite have the upper hand with their eyesight. Do you all have a lovely drink? No? Now oh, they're starting to settle down. I'm sure you can hear that the rain is getting a bit heavier. It's nice to see though that it's a it's a pretty decent sized herd, not one of the mega herds that typically come through. Maybe there's about 50 to 80 individuals here, maybe a little bit more, but I, I, I don't know. I think even saying 100 is pushing it a little bit. Also hear the red-chested cuckoo in the distance. But this is a nice little open patch for them. I'm not sure whether they're, they're going to stay here for too long. They might just have a quick drink and then move back out. I mean, ideally, if they can go up to, onto the plains. Of, have we got one eating? We're still looking for an actual grazing buffalo. Is it really? Sorry. I So the, my monitor's done a really weird thing where it's double zoomed in, so I actually can't see what's going on right now. I haven't figured out what how I'd press that button or what I've done, so I need to figure that out at some point. Come on, who's going to actively pull out a piece of grass? No one, because you're all busy watching me. I can't believe it's so difficult to get a grazing buffalo. Never in my entire life. Did we? Okay, Odie is asking you all to confirm. I didn't see it because I'm watching my monitor, but everything is cut off, so I have no idea how to fix this. I don't know how I did that. Um, Albert, that's interesting. Um, with regards to who is the leader in a herd of buffalo. So, 
it's predominantly the females, which uh, there's a group of females that are normally older and, you know, have lived a life. Uh, and they're the experienced girls and uh, they are called pathfinders and they typically decide in which direction the herd is going to go um, for the most part. The bulls are of course, so again, so I'm sorry, I can't, the whole monitor is completely, uh, so I'm not really sure. I'm just kind of staring out now. Um, sorry, Odie was just asking if, uh, okay, if you are seeing buffalo eating, fantastic, please confirm it for me, that'd be great. I don't, I'm not sure which buffalo we're on right now, but I'll figure, fix that problem in a minute. Um, but I'm sure that someone will confirm that we had a grazing buffalo this time around. Uh, sorry, to get back to your question about uh, the, yes, the pathfinders. But the bulls are also quite involved in the herd. Uh, they, they can also come and go though, but um, there's no real structure uh, to the bulls, they'll fight for dominance if there is a cow that's in estrus. They, you know, kind of butt heads amongst one another and decide who who gets to mate with her. Um, some of the older bulls sort of lag off and end up forming smaller groups, or they'll be on their own. Um, but it's also not uncommon for buffaloes to move into new groups, and um, particularly females can do that. And so, um, I mean, the bulls can do it too. They can sort of leave, but that might be when they're a little bit on the on the younger side. They're not very territorial. They're not territor territorial at all, in fact. So I imagine that they, they could be quite accepting. And when you get those super herds of buffalo and you know, have over, you know, a thousand individuals, that's not one group of buffalo. That's a bunch of different family groups together all, all, all moving with one another. So, you know, you can sort of see how they, they are slightly accepting. I'm sure that there are terms and conditions that might apply, but I haven't learned how to speak buffalo or read it. So I'm not 100% sure. Stop dripping on me. There's water is starting to build onto the roof. So we'll have to be very strategic as to how we sort of empty that. Okay, we've got grazing buffalo that are confirmed. We're also going to go into infrared soon. Now I need to decide grazing buffalo. I don't think we're going to get bingo, unfortunately, so I can... Hey? Oh, can you? Yes. Actually, you can go diagonal, can't you? Yeah. One, two, three, four in a row. Ooh. Look at me go. Um... I don't know if that counts, but anyway, so there we've got buffalo grazing. Finally, gosh, that's, uh, that's taken, taken a little while. I'm going to go forward just a little bit, if you don't mind, just so that I can... We are also going into infrared. Okay, I'm just going to move the car slightly. Just they've all kind of gone around the bend. Hello. Where's that old buffalo? I'm gonna look, kind of look for her. It's starting to get so dark though. It's difficult to see, thank goodness for the infrared. And being able to see him properly. There's one car that's death staring me at the moment. Ah, I promise. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I just want to watch you and learn. No, not happy. That one car was very pregnant, She's very big. She was the one that was sort of death staring me. Um, but she's just gone off to the right now. Now Gallego Pan is not particularly large. You can just see a couple of them having having a drink. I don't know how many of them have already had a had a sip of water or if they've drank and they're getting ready to move off again. Like I said, it'd be great quarantine open plains are not too far from here. And it seems as though they are going to head in that direction. Now I don't know what has pushed them this side onto Juma. I don't know if it was lions that are maybe tailing them. We know that they love to do that. Or if they were just, you know, looking for better grazing, that's that's also, of course, a valid reason. They don't necessarily always have to have something tailing behind them or chasing them in order for them to move. But uh, the lions of the Sabi San do prefer buffalo when it is available. This is just nice listening to all the birds calling one last time. Little buffalo just trotting along. Bye. And once they kind of move off from here, I think we'll go back out. We'll just do a little loop around Vertella Dam 
and then see if we end up catching them on the other side. I'm going to strategically try and remove the water from the roof without uh, dousing all the electronics. Off you go to Chris, who I think is admiring the last of the light. Just that last little bit of glow. Can appreciate that before it's dark. And soon after this it will be dark, so then we'll probably head into our IOR mode. And then um look for some maybe some nocturnal things. Perhaps an observant owl. Maybe another fidgety frog. A leaping leopard. Hmm. Maybe, just maybe, we can add one or two more. One thing we're going to have with this cooler weather, you, last night and the night before, there were so many insects. It was unbelievable. We've got so many bites on us. Biting flies, mosquitoes, ticks, blister beetles. I've got a nice little blister here on my leg. And that comes with the territory. That summer, out here, it's... After that first big rains, it's an eruption of all sorts of insects, and that's unfortunate. But that's that comes with the badge, as they say. But tonight, with the scooter weather, there would be a lot less insects. Meriden wants to know, what do I enjoy the most about watching a sunset? Meriden, it's not necessarily the aesthetics of it, which is obviously quite pretty. I love the way the colors change all the time, literally in front of your eyes. But for me, the value, I would rather say, of a sunset, it's to sit there knowing you've done a good day's work, and you ref it's a time to reflect on the day, if you're on holiday, it's a time to just reflect back and just think about the experiences you had for the day. Almost kind of like reliving it. Mm, so he know. Making a noise somewhere. Was oh, that a dog? Sounded more like a dog. <laughs> No, that's how you know. But that for me is the greatest value in a sunset is to just sit and reflect and think about the day. I'm kind of like just appreciate where you are.
All right, I've left the area with the hyena den and uh, it was Masangita that side and of course uh, in the Bile. Um, so I left that uh, area because they moved away. But on top of that as well, I was waiting for Langa, but uh, I wasn't going to wait much longer because it just seems like she was not in a hurry coming north. north. But yeah, you know, that's unfortunate that uh, she was not, maybe tomorrow morning, maybe uh, Ben or Taylor might be lucky with uh, uh, Langa tomorrow morning. But I think as well for uh, today, I was thinking, uh, Igor and myself were talking, I think maybe with our war cry that we did there at Chilipan, I think it may, maybe might have been a little bit of a, how can I say, to maybe we actually shot ourselves in the foot there. But I'm just joking, it was still fun. But anyway, let's head over to Taylor to see what's happening on her night safari. And there's another one I'll show you. Well, we are, we've just basically found chameleon heaven. I'm just going to drop the light a little bit. Do you see it? There you go. I'm just going to take the light off completely. I was just showing Odie where it was. You might be able to just see. Uh, let me add a little bit more. The sort of different color, the sort of lighter color. There is a chameleon in that side but what we will do is we don't need to get cl so close to that one because there's actually another one that's even better i just need to drive a, maybe a couple of meters further forward and then we can have a look at that let's do that od rather because this one's obviously quite a distance away amazing three chameleons in one night let me show you the third one maybe we'll even get a few more just gonna oh sorry i didn't mean to scare you it got upset and it's uh it started it started moving a little bit so i'm just taking my water cover off the monitor so i can watch it properly so there is another chameleon much bigger than the one we just saw and then the one we had earlier on uh on quarantine this one looks like quite a chunk it's quite uh looks like it's maybe eaten lots or maybe it's a female that's pregnant again i'm not really going to go too close and uh, necessarily investigate you won't believe it on my monitor there's a black random dot on the screen and it's so funny every time we have any content <laughs> that black dot falls perfectly on the screen and i can never really see what's actually uh, what's actually going on but it did move slightly and unfortunately it was because of us we are uh, um, quite a distance away i haven't got the light on it at all anymore we're just using the infrared which is so amazing so it should settle back down again because like i said they're normally getting ready um to go to sleep but you can see its little prehensile tail I, at, th at first glance i thought it was curled around something but i think it's actually just at a at a sort of resting state come on find a comfortable spot and then hold on tight and don't move again that would be my advice if i was a chameleon but you can see its eyes are wide open and it's looking around quite a bit. Oh, there comes the wind. Hold on. No, not having any of it this evening. There are lots of... I'm trying to think what those are. If those... Oh, sorry. Somehow managed to turn my radio... Radio down. Kim, um... So... The chameleons, it's going to change its color, yes, if I get closer to it, but again, not because it's its doing it like on purpose, it, it's that um, it's a stress response essentially. So yeah, so it's going to want to intimidate me because I'm big and scary. So what it might do, if it feels that I have spotted it and I go closer, it, it's firstly it's going to try and make itself bigger. So it's going to puff itself up. You normally see how they inflate their throats and on, on their throats it, it typically goes quite orange and you'll get blacks and co very contrasting colors to try and sort of warn me being the predator not that i'm actually interested in harming the chameleon but the chameleon doesn't know that um so yes absolutely it will is to say leave me alone basically um but yeah it looks a little bit more relaxed now i think we'll carry on i'm sure we're going to find more chameleons as we as we sort of bumble along this road we'll let that one do its thing so all the insects are starting to come out. I kind of wish it would start drizzling a little bit harder now, only because 
then the bugs won't be as active and flying around because they'll struggle. I'm just going to take this road really slowly because it is so bad. It's actually not great at all. And so I'm going to focus on driving. Please excuse me. But then I'm also multitasking because I'm still scanning for chameleons. My goodness! This is not a road. I'm just going to go through all the bushes. It's always such a horrible feeling. Not that I'm particularly worried, but when you have these roofs on the cars, it makes them feel very top heavy. And then when you go down any little obstacles and you kind of sl slip into a rut or something like that, it's terrifying. It feels like the whole car is going to roll over. But I mean, there, it's at such a little angle it won't, but your heart definitely sinks to your feet. Mine does at least every single time. I don't think I'll ever get over it. Okay. Let's see. What else? I can hear lots of frogs, so I'm also going to keep my eyes open for any frogs that are on the road because we... Do we have frogs? Yes, we do. Fidgety frog over here. So we can add one of those to the list. Maybe we'll get a foam nest frog. I wouldn't mind seeing a little painted reed frog, maybe. Um, or, I don't know, what else? Oh, what about a bushveld rain frog? That would be wonderful. I haven't seen one. Now, Cedric is doing exactly the same thing as we are, and that's using his spotlight and looking around. Yeah, no, it's always nice, uh, Taylor. I'm actually loving the spotlight just to try and see if we can find any of the nocturnal critters that's around. I'm hoping for maybe a janitor around somewhere. Uh, I've definitely been missing out on the janitor. I used to always get that beautiful janitor that ha always was hanging around on Vuotilla Access towards uh, Sandy Patch area. And it would be awesome, awesome, awesome just to kind of pick up on that. and. Uh, Let's see if we can get one of those little ones. But other than that, also Ingwe Alley. Ingwe Alley is just another area that I have been very fortunate having uh, some luck with some nocturnal uh, critters around that side. But yeah, other than that, it's, uh, it's, been a, it's been a tough afternoon. It's been a very tough afternoon, but, uh, but a lot of fun. Tough, but a lot of fun, as always. And I think, I think my board this afternoon was just... Uh, it was just not playing, playing, uh, playing with me at all. I think. It was. Oh. <clears throat> Sorry. To, to, so, what kind of uh, ducks carry venom? Ducks? A duck carry venom? Sorry. Uh, uh, sorry, Chula. I think I've got that completely wrong because, yeah, <laughs> I don't think that I got that right. Uh, Teresa, sure. There's so many different ones. I mean, if you look at something like a blister beetle, for instance, like a toxin. So, of course, a lot of the, the toxins coming off a blister beetle, all the acids, it is very, very painful. I've, uh, I've had blister beetles on my leg, in my mouth, on my hands, um, and it is not comfortable. It is, and it's not for a one day, it's for two, three days. You sit with, um, you know, like almost like a rash. With the blisters and the rash and all that, it's and it's not comfortable. So that's definitely one of them that you don't want to pretty much uh, mess around with. Then it comes to something like maybe then your centipedes as well. That's a very very pretty much venomous as well and very how can I say the bites are very sore. So you don't want to mess around with those centipedes. So but there's so many different things around here that's got the venom and uh, oh there's a whole lot of bush babies here. A whole of bush oh oh shit it's, it's just there, there's so many eyes in there oh there they go it's busy hopping around okay i'm gonna just put off there oh there you can see the one eye oh where where where, where are they now okay there's the one eye you can see the two eyes looking at us there um there, it's just moving in the background so i saw like about three or four different sets of eyes yeah, and next to us. Oh, look at it. Oh, it's inside a little bush baby. Is it? 
Oh, no, it's Janet. It's a mom with baby Janet. Yes, it's little Janet. Look at that. So it's a mother with the little kids. Oh, my word. This is just... I am absolutely so, so chuffed about this. Um, I don't even know where, where am I. I'm on Weaver's Nest, just north of um, Pangolin Track. Look at that little one. I was just talking about Janet's now, so, and uh, uh, as I said, I just saw, saw a few eyes. At least, there was at least four sets of eyes, yeah. So definitely it's mom with her little kids. That is fantastic. Don't go. I'm just, just looking around here. I'm going to keep quiet here. I'm hoping it's going to come just to the front. I feel very nocturnal little kid, and they're always seeing them solitary, so they're not in a family, they're solitary. Um, that's why I, got, I thought it was bush babies, because bush babies are usually in families. Um, and I thought, wow, that must be a bush baby, I couldn't believe it, but uh, it's definitely a female with the youngsters here, because as I said, just like a leopard, uh, a solitary cat. And just taking a look at them, oh, okay, I can just still see the eyes, I'm just hoping that they will, one or two of them will come to the front again. Um, I don't want to start the vehicles. I don't want to chase them off. And they are, they are absolutely beautiful. So this must be the large spotted genet. Uh, small spotted genets, we do get them, but they're very uncommon. Yolanda, yes, definitely a special sighting. I am so, so happy with this. It might not be the greatest of view, but at least I saw a few there. You can see the little face there between the leaves. Oh, that is just so adorable. Um, so they'll usually have three or four kits. Um, so that's because uh, the female has got four teats. So she'll never have more than that. And they're always hanging, maybe like these dead stumps, um, dead wood, like a real hollowed out areas. That's where they'll kind of have like little den sites and even in little mounds as well. You know, if it's a mound that's connected to maybe a bit of a tree, sometimes you'll find a lot of little holes going back and forth through the area. And, oh, but look at that, so adorable. It's definitely one of the youngsters. You can just see. Oh, it's going. Oh, it's coming out. They're coming out. They're coming out to play. They're coming out to play. Oh, don't go behind there. They're on top. They just went on top there. Of course, catching all the little insects and rodents and like scorpions, centipedes. There's another one. We've got two there. They're all just playing around the tree area. So as well with the uh, with the genets, when they when they get to around about. One year, close to a year old, you'll find that the youngsters will start moving away from the parents' area and they'll start kind of uh, becoming more independent for themselves. And of course, living in other dead trees. And one day they'll also have a ter are territorial. So when they do mark that their, their territory, say, their territorial scent or their gland smells exactly the same as a leopard. Just that typical, um, uh, like that buttered popcorn smell, exactly the same. And they'll send mark all the time at the same areas over and over and over. And sometimes that area can be very, very strong in that scent. Oh, man. Oh, I count about four, but I think there's four of them. So two this side, two the other side. What a way to end my, my stint here with these genets. This is exactly what I was hoping for. I was just talking about genets, a little one jumping. 
and typical very very also very agile in the trees very very agile so they can also really jump from branch to branch and really maneuver around these small little areas What do you think? You go about four, eh? I, was, I counted four so far. It looks like the adult there with the little one. Look, there you go. It's an adult mom with one, two. So mom went in front with a two, and the third comes right at the back there now. Oh, wow. I think they went into that long grass. Now, I don't want to start up because it's just going to scare them off. I'm just going to quickly throw my light out here. I just want to double check where the eyes are. Because that's one way we can just quickly pick up because we are in infrared, so totally dark here. I'm just going to quickly put my light on here. I want to take a look. Ruth, it's already at a young age, you're looking at about six months, six, seven months, then they start really moving around by themselves, but moving completely out of uh, mom's area, out of their little den sites, that comes up to about close to a year old. But now, for now, it's just pretty much still attached to mom. I'm sure they're about, I, I don't know, I, I'm not even, I, <laughs> uh, uh, Three, four months old, these little ones. I'm not too sure. It's, I just, I'm just, I'm not going to put a number on there. But uh, okay, I'll see where they are. They might move to the road here. Yeah. So I'm just going to stand back here yeah, and give it a, give and take another four, five minutes. I'm just going to try and see the movements of them. Okay, I can see them moving just there. You can just see the eye. Yeah, you can see the eye. I think they're moving a little bit more now. Yeah, they are coming this way. So they might go across this road in front of us, which will be fantastic. You can still see the one eye just blinking there. So they're very strictly nocturnal. You hardly ever see them really wandering around during the daytime. Just the night time. Yeah, it's going to be very tough. It's, and that's, I think they might have moved on a little bit further down that way towards that Maruda tree. So I can't see any the side anymore. Alex, uh, four. Four, four kits. So we'll call them a kit. And I can have four, four teats, just like a lion. So they have four kits. So I'm just going to see if we can get an opportunity to go a little bit forward. But I'll have to just wait a little bit here. I think we'll go a little bit forward then. Yeah, let's try. Go a bit forward. I don't think get an, I'm not going to get an opportunity. So let's try to do it. Go slowly, yeah. I'll try not to put too much. Yeah, go slowly. Right, well, we're going to try and reposition. Let's see what Chris has got on his nocturnal list. I was hoping that I would get one last little item for my bingo board. Look at those dung beetles. Don't you think they're quite daring to be out at this time of the night? Two things, that elephant poo is very smelly. And that bull we saw earlier at Ntlofu Dam. And I tell you, it's not the normal smelliness, it's very smelly. So I think he's quite daring. 
Interesting. Some uh, uh, there's a very large dung beetle out here. I can't remember the species, but those big black ones. They actually even use the Milky Way as navigation. Just by the way, that's quite daring. So I do have a daring dung beetle. It's not going to raise my score in a row, but it will put me up to four if I can get it. If you are in agreement that this is a daring dung beetle. And I'll still be on two in a row, but I'll have a total of four items on the board. Which looks a bit more respectable. <laughs> Shows you they're not only active in daytime, in fact they are quite active at night. Especially in summer because it's not so hot. And there are fewer predators around. from the sky but there are all sorts of other things creeping around at night so I think they are very brave very daring Right, okay, well let's go and see what C Cedric's gender is up to. I'm going to sit here with the dung beetles for a little bit. I've got those little genets again with mom and the two, looks like two or three youngsters, little kids here, up, up and down. But they were, it was the most amazing thing. About two minutes ago, they were running up and down, and one came running towards the vehicle, which was absolutely crazy. But they were so cute. So mom is there, and you see the two youngsters. It looks like maybe only two. I thought I saw four, uh, three young ones, but so far I've only counted uh, two. Young says with mom, yeah. She's busy grooming herself. No, very curious. I love that beautiful little black stripe that runs down the thing. Oh, look at that. Staying close to mom. One, two. Yeah, I think there's only two young ones. She became so curious just now. She came right up to where the vehicle is. I mean, it was about two meters from us. Oh, there she goes off. The two youngsters following suit. We still see the one eyes, eh? There's a <laughs> Look at that. Where's mom? Where's mom? Uh, looks like they have darted off now. Just scanning the area, looks like we've just lost a view of them now for the time being. So I'm just trying to scan here, yeah, definitely going to hang back a little bit here just to see if we can find these three genets again. So you'll just see my spotlight coming in the area, but it's just to pick up on the eyes. So I can just see how many of them. They might have gone back to the original tree. But I think they might actually just be behind here somewhere. I'm not going to shine on them, of course. Oh, they're right here. Oh, they're right here. <laughs> they're right in front here. I oh, thought I just saw two moving here now. I'm going to take my light off here. Let's see if we can get some eyes. Mm 
yeah, 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 yeah. This side, yeah. You'll see, you'll see just to the right there, um, Eagle. He's like a dead stump. Let's go to the right, to the right. You'll see more right. You'll see like a dead thick stump. Dead stump, yeah. There it goes, eh? Looks like they're playing around a bit. And they are so quick. They are absolutely lightning quick when they have to run. Our daring dung beetle has been confirmed. So I'm still on two in a row. And I've done well. I think I've done very well for this afternoon considering the weather that we had, those challenging conditions. Now we're just watching our daring dung beetle rolling or gathering some dung. And what we're seeing there is the next generation that's food for their kids, for their larvae. And they're going to lay the eggs in that and some more dung beetles will hatch from there which is important they are one of the most important species out here so while i'm going to quickly scan with my torch around the dam uh, nothing there Right, seems like we're going to quickly go back to Cedric to see what he's got for us there. <coughs> yeah, as you can see, we are sitting here still with uh, these uh, genets, these large spotted genets, and of course, mom is just looking at us. Um, the two little ones, are just, uh, I just saw a lot of movement to the right not too long ago. I'm sure they're playing around. You can see where she's looking back that way. And it looks like she's got her hands full. Yeah, oh, there's the one, little one. Oh, they're busy playing that side. But yes, so like a good eagle, it's like sometimes it's so much more difficult finding small cats and things like this than the, the bigger things. And for me to see this now with, of course, mom and two youngsters, it's brilliant, just absolutely amazing. Mm. This has been absolutely amazing. I'm just going to sit and enjoy this moment with him. But yes, as you know, tonight is uh, the hangout with uh, James Henry. So please, Wild Earth, you know that you all have really been enjoying the Wild Show and must have tons and tons of questions. So James will be doing a Wild Show hangout for explorers only, and that is tonight at uh, of course at 8 p.m central african time and you can all chat about how it's going and answer all answer any questions that you're going to send through to him and so please do make sure that you're not going to be missing out on that that is james henry's hangout tonight but yes once again thank you so much for joining us on our sunset safari what a wonderful way to like end this uh, uh the sunset safari with uh, these uh, Janets and the two youngsters mom and two young ones i'm hoping that everybody had a great day and had as much fun as we with the bingo we tried really hard today to see if we can get as much as possible answer as many questions and thank you as well for all the amazing comments that you sent to us as well. So yeah, that has been definitely a wonderful day once again. 
But yes, please make sure that you're going to join us again tomorrow on our Sunrise Safari. I will be on leave and I'll be joining on Jet Dam Camp for the next few days. So you'll be hearing my voice for a few days that side. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Good night. In this episode of The Wild Show, we'll see animals fighting over mating rights. Then we'll see animals mating. And then, of course, we'll see the inevitable results of animals mating. Small animals. We'll see these small animals learning how to behave and become adults, which will also mate. Let's push play on this episode of The Wild Show. Here is George the hyena, and George the hyena desperately wants someone to play with him. Unfortunately, everyone else is irritated with George the hyena. He's taken the only toy at the den, and nobody really wants to wrestle him for it. They are sick and tired of him. They wish that he would just put the toy down. And there is a George on every playground around the world right now who's playing with the toy and not the actual game. So I suspect everyone else was using that toy for a game with a specific set of rules. George, being young and stupid, came in and just took the toy and the game was ruined and then no one wanted to play with him. And now they're going to bite him to punish him for his recalcitrance. <laughs> Into the Masai Mara, where a flock of ground hornbills is now attracting the attentions of a young elephant bull. Now, what's interesting is that these uh, two animals are, in fact, at the same stage of life. They're two youths. They are two youths having a fight. That is a youthful ground hornbill and a youthful elephant. And in their youthful exuberance, one has chased the other away.